brother man In every nation in the Caribbean We suffering down in the Caribbean And it's all because of stinking oppression Repressive education For a chosen few So many brothers on the corner Cause no school to go No work to do Crying
Oppressors. 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 Oppression, sound of the man Beckett. Oppression is really knocking us about in our beloved Federation of St. Kitts Nevis. The struggle continues. I'm DJ Marish and I'm coming to you live and direct from my Gaza here in the Boogie Down Bronx, New York. It's a beautiful Wednesday evening here, May 10th, 2023, um, in the Boogie Down Bronx. Temperature is in the 70s today. Hope you will stay up there. We're not going to pause anything this evening, you know. They said they want to pause interviews and whatever, but we're going to be chatting to my brother there, Honorable um, Joseph Parry, former Premier of Navy, should be joining me shortly. And we're going to just have a serious conversation about the happenings here on the island of Nevis. We're going to be speaking about the Federation in general. But um, at the end of the day, we are going to be talking frank, frank and honest about the happenings in the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis. There ain't going to be any pause this evening. There ain't going to be no attacking anyone. We're just going to be speaking natural about the happening. Um, Brother Parry, if you can hear me, um, turn your device on this side you get a full screen uh right now the way it's turned i'm seeing you from um correct that is nice nice a full screen like that and your daughter is doing a good job so thank whether it's your daughter or your wife they are very good engineers so thank them for a good job uh just keep it that way um we're gonna get into the chat chit chat with brother parry in a bit but before we get into the chit chat with uh brother parry i'm gonna drop another track here because uh you know Right now in the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis, we need a prayer, you know. We need a blessing for uh, what is happening in our beloved Federation. And the people need to have a sense of understanding that they say a picture worth a thousand words, but a picture don't have to give you a thousand stress. So I'm asking my good people of St. Kitts Nevis to just ignore the pictures what is taking place, whether in the UK, uh, in the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis. Just focus on uh, what we, um, we have to do to change the direction of the politics and the nonsense that is taking place there in, a, in our beloved uh, St. Kitts Nevis. And a lot of things that is happening right now, you know, these things only could happen in St. Kitts. Because if you all are watching what is happening here in North America and what is happening in the UK, People have to resign from public office for less than the criminal activities that is taking place there in St. Kitts Nevis. You know. People have to resign for less than that. And for whatever reason, our people continue to accept the, make, the mediocrity uh, management of what taking place on Nevis. But tonight, we're going to take a pause from that um, I don't know what to call it, of a building, the external um, ring there for the Alexandria Hospital. We're going to take a pause on that. We're going to come to the man, Joseph Parry, because many people have been calling me and saying, why Parry is so quiet? Well, Parry is not a quiet man. I think he's capable of speaking. So I'm going to drop this track, and I'm going to come right back to Brother Joseph Parry, and we're going to have a good chit-chat here. So stand by. The man, Lord Cut, only in St. Christopher and Nevis, we got this corruption taking place. The man cut. Oh yeah. So 
a situation like this is unique. Oh 
terms of the man lad cut, um, brother Paris, tap your screen there, open your mic. Let me just sail up a few folks here online before we get into the chit chat. Want to big up my girl there, Sister D Francis in the Capistia area there. How are you doing, Sister D? Want to big up Nigel McMahon. How are you doing? Even Jeffers, how is life there in the UK? Everything good? Sister G, G Williams, Skeet, how are you doing? Ruthland Hell, JT Taylor, Randa Brown, how are you guys doing? Lynette Farrell, Joseph Walcott Parry, welcome to the ride. Your mic is still closed. You need to tap your screen and hit that red icon. Open your mic. I want to big up my boy there, Brother Eustace Hendricks today in the Houston area. Brother C.G. Walwin, how are you doing? Commissioner Walwin, the man uh, dancing, Commissioner Austin Williams, how are you doing? You open, Parry, that's good. Stand by. Um, I want to big up Tessa Brown, how are you doing? Everything good with you? Tessa Brown, Paris, Sanya Powell. Want to big up my boy there, brother. Um, Powell, the man there, brother, Kelvin Daly and the man Tulu. Great performance last last um Wednesday, Wednesday, last Thursday, gentlemen. And Saturday was a ball there with the man Hensley Daniel. Great performance. You guys uh picking it up and doing the right thing. Keep the pressure. Keep it coming. Also want to big up Ruby Walters. Sister Beverly Marisha, how are you doing? Gwyneth Marisha, my baby girl is hanging with daddy this evening. So it's good to have my baby girl with me. How about Sister Cicely Brown there? Sandra Thompson, how are you doing? Joy Richardson, Tanya Powell, Joy Richardson. Ingrid, how are you doing? Everything good with you? Ingrid Daniel, um, Sister Hazel Claxton, how are you doing? The man Jean, how about the man there? But the Astro, everything good with you? Warren Nisbet, everything good? How about my boy there, brother? Nigel Leader. Herman Evelyn, everything good with you? Pearl Francis. Wow, you guys are really here. Monica Brown, my brother there, Ashburn Liber, they're good. Um, Shepard, how are you doing? Everything good? Um, Jason Hazel, <laughs> Dowdy Allen, how are you doing? My mascot, everything good? Brother Jeff Pemberton, Sister Patricia Barlett, Bartlett. How about um, Sister? JD Keynes. Patty, how are you doing? Everything good with you? Clayton Davis, everything nice? I want to big up my boy, the man Monarch. How are you doing? Brother Aston Williams again. Um, Teresa, how are you doing, Brown? Laquisha Dyer, everything good with you? Visha, how are you doing? Everything good? Well, Brother Parry, good evening. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you quite loud and clear. Man, you're coming to loud and clear. It's good having you back and the program. And uh, as I always say to folks when they come online, remember you was here before, but the program get um, viewership weekly, it increased. So we're going to ask you to just give a quick synopsis of who is Honorable Joseph Parry before we get into the chit chat. Okay, well, um, first of all, let me say that I, uh, I didn't start as a politician. I started as a civil servant. I, I taught at Charleston Secondary School for eight years. And then I worked at Social Security from 1978 to 1980. I was permanent secretary of Navy Affairs from 1980 until 1984. In other words, I was the only permanent secretary in Navy at that time. And all the ministries were lumped together. And um, in 1983, we had the, the um, independence constitution for Nevis and uh, ministries were formed. So I became the um, PS Premier's Ministry. Then in 1987, I went into politics and I was in politics for about 31 years. Um, apart from that, I was uh, president of the Nevis Cricket Association for many years. I was involved in the overthrow of the, of the old association. And so I was a, a, a a new member, one of the members of the Nevis Cricket Association, which is still functioning today. And I have also been involved in the church. So, well, I was involved in netball too. A lot of people don't know that, but I, I used to be a selector in netball in those days. So that's me basically. All right, great. Um, your camera, I realize you're holding your device, but I'm not seeing your face, I'm seeing your chest. If you could bring it down uh, up, you can that see your face. Um, you see my face now? Yeah, yeah. If you can bring it closer, yeah. Um, you're looking much better there. You look like okay. you're in Nevis now. Now you look like you're in Nevis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring it back. Bring it back where it was. Come back. Bring it back a bit. I don't know if you got could lean it up on something, but and just come closer. 
Okay, let's see. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, but if you can come closer, it's um it's too far away from you. Know? Yeah, that's better there. Okay. All right. Yeah, brother Parry. Um, there's a lot of things that have been taking place in the atmosphere, and I'd be getting the calls. I want to know why Mr. Parry is so quiet. And I know you're not a quiet fellow from the little I know of you, and you're very straightforward. It's still keep picking up your chest and not your head. You had it up a while ago properly. So I don't know, I don't know if you want to bring it up a bit or uh, down that angle. Correct. That's that would be good right about there. Yeah, I'm going to have to adjust that because it's an awkward position. Okay, make your adjustment. Adjust whatever you have to adjust, whether yourself or the device. Well. Come, baby girl, come. Yeah, but I can't hold it on. You can hold it on. Okay. Um, go ahead, Marisha. Yeah, um, I have my baby girl here with me, and she's about to leave. So before, before my baby girl leave, I just wanted to... Um, you're hiding from people, you lovely girl. Say hi, <laughs> say hi, say hi to Mr. Parry. Wave, wave to hi. Mr. Parry. Hi, how are you? How are you? She said, How are you doing? Good. You're doing good. Okay, that's Honorable Joseph Parry. So, good to see you, Marisha. Yeah. yeah, all right, so safe journey home, okay? All right, yeah, brother Parry. I just love when my baby girl come to visit. She is my heartbeat. Yeah. Okay. Um, the situation here, Brother Parry, there's a lot of talk on the street, and I don't listen to the talks. I, I deal with the facts and whatever I'm seeing. I know there's a lot of fake things going on out there, the hype, and I really don't have time for that. So I like to go to the source and speak to the people. There's a lot of things that we learned, uh, I learned during the last federal electoral campaign and the last local election campaign. So let's start there, because there are some things that is going on now that people is of the opinion that there is some fight between the Labour Party and the NRP. I don't see it. So maybe you guys are seeing something different here to what I am seeing. According to um, a report that I received on the eve of the last federal election, Kennedy, the Honorable Kennedy and Fall Simmons, the only living national hero, tell the world that in 2010, there was a coup led by the former Hagdi, Timothy Harris, to overthrow the Douglas administration and the Labour Party in 2010. And when you were approached, because the NRP had one seat in the federal government, which was Patrice Nisbet, when you was approached to be a part of the plan, basically you had the ace card. You could have determined whether you're going to support Timothy Harris and overthrow a Labour Party, or you're going to stick to your guns and let the Labour Party stay in power. And after Timothy was not successful, that is when he went back to the Labour administration and the Labour administration saw another life for another term. Is there any truth to that? Yep, that's very true. Um, Dr. Simmons approached me, he was of his descent, and I, I told him quite clearly that I was not involved in that type of thing, that I would not be part of it. And um, I, uh, continue to work with Dr. Douglas, um, as was agreed. So um, that part is very true. I did not know all the details of what was going on, but I was not going to be part of anything that involved that type of behavior. You know, and, and this leads me to the next question, um, Anna Rebel, because people got to understand some of, some of the politicians and our people, they don't have no sense of loyalty and they like to make excuses. You, as the leader of the NRP, and you as a former premier, you run in the St. Thomas's number, what? That's number five? Five. Number five. Number five, five Depending. Did you run as a candidate for the benefit of Joseph Parry, or did you run as a candidate for NRP? Um, let me make that absolutely clear. That first of all, in my philosophy, country comes first, party comes second, and Joseph Parry comes a long last. I never, and I, I must say this about the NRP that, that I um, got involved in. It was not about personality and it was not about self. It was about country. It was always about the development of Nevis. That's what it was about. Um, this business of um, personality and self uh, was never part of, of, of NRP politics. Uh, the, the, the questions I'm asking you tonight, Brother Parry, 
I'm asking you this question and people would say they're hard questions and I appreciate your straight answers because they have to be straight. We have a former premier who was in a position to bring down the Labour Party because at the time people believe St. Kitts and Nevis and the Labour Party was at war. So it should have been easy for you to take what you can get as, as, as the new world is fair share and to help with the Labour Party. You did not go that route. You stick with the Labour Party and you make sure that it was country first. The Federation was first and foremost in your mind. Now, today, 2023, we know that there was an effort to bring down the Labour Party and the current Premier of Nevis, Baby Brantley, he bragged about his success when the tri-party CCM, CCM, the People's Action Movement, PAM led by Sean Richards and the former PLP, um, led by Timothy Harris, the former hub, who was successful in 2015 in forming a government and bringing the Labour Party. I heard Mark Brantley, David Brantley on more than one occasion, brag about bringing down the Labour Party, brag about putting Dr. Douglas in the departure lounge. So a two total approach coming from you and baby Bentley. And today, up to this afternoon, I'm getting the phone calls because people are very upset and annoyed. And I'm trying to tell them, you cannot be annoyed at Dr. Drew for accommodating the Premier of Nevis. Whether you like the man or not, you got to respect the office. And Dr. Drew is doing the correct thing. When the time comes, I know Dr. Drew have said it, and I have confidence in Dr. Drew. That is not about an individual, it's about Nevis, it's about the Federation. He's the prime minister for everybody. And he has his handful. And I know many people want to kill me, say I helped to put them there and they're not doing a good job. Mr. Parry, this is just my opinion. For all that the Federation went through for seven years, I think the Labour Party has done a splendid job so far, trying to restore a little um, good direction for the people and for the country. They are not doing everything 100%. There are things I will do differently, and I will outline some of them this evening. But we are here to voice our opinion. We are basically the unpaid advisor. So I am asking you, give me your views on the current situation, the atmosphere between Sinkins and Nevis. Well, I would um, use an analogy in 2006, when NRP won the Nevis government, the People's Action Movement um, assumed that we had a relationship, although Dr. Simmons made it quite clear that relationship ended in 1995. And um, they wanted me to fight the Labour Party and um, to work with them, to collude with them. Now, it did not make any sense to me because I was Premier of Nevis. My role was to develop Nevis, and my position was that whatever government was in power, that's the government that I work with. People who supported the People's Action Movement got very angry and felt that I had betrayed them, forgetting that my loyalty has to be to the people who voted for me and to do their bidding. I think Dr. Drew is facing the same situation today. He is Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. He has just won an election. His business is to run the Federation. Mark Brantley is the Premier of Nevis. He has to work with the Premier of Nevis. Um, I, I understand the feelings of certain people. I understand that it angers them, but he has no choice. He can't just get into a political fight because um, the NRP wants him to get into a political fight. My position is this, that NRP as a political party had a job to do. Their job is to ensure that they're in touch with the people of Nevis. They need to go out there campaigning, <coughs> campaigning, 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 doing things for people, uh, organizing things for people, um, helping people in any way that they can. They also need to constructively criticize the government, the Nevis Island government, for the way they're running the country. They must bring to people's attention that all these young people who have gone to university and have come back can't get any work. They should uh, point out the state of the school system, the state of education. They should point out 
the state of the health system. And they must bring to people's attention that the party, the CCM party, is not as united as people think. They need to do that. It's going to be hard work. But you can't win politics. You can't win um, an election without hard work. And that is something the NRP needs to understand. The final point I want to make here is that you can't look to Labour or Pam or anybody to do the work for you. You have to do the work for yourself. That is what you have to do. And you, you know, um, I, there have been skirmishes. I'm hearing, I'm not on Facebook, but I'm hearing about skirmishes. A lot of the skirmishes are coming from people on both sides who are not part of the political directorate, who don't really fully understand what is taking place, who don't understand the um, cut and trust of politics. And they see things in black and white. Oh, I'm against you. So, and, and so and so is against you, so we have to work together. It doesn't work that way. It cannot work that way. And as far as I'm concerned, the leaders of the part, political parties, whether it's Labour or NRP, need to make their dogs be quiet. Quiet them, tell them to shut up and do go and work to put um, NRP back in, in, in government. And from Dr. as far as Dr. G is concerned, for them to focus on the development of Sinkis and Evis. I would say this, you know, uh, Marisha, there is one thing that NRP should focus on, the electoral reform. The electoral office in Nevis, it is corrupt. There is no doubt about it. And uh, if it, that was straightened out, we would not have lost that election um, in December. Focus on that. Stop the quarreling. Stop the, the going backward and forward. Focus on issues that can help clear up things in this country and help us to have a fair election next time around. Um, Honorable Parry, in hindsight, I um, decided to support the NRP only after I had done my due diligence and realized that Baby Brantley is lying to the people. I have tested him on numerous occasions from 2015, the 3rd of October to be exact, to present. And I see all this guy do is trust some camouflage. He's not in the full military uniform. He lies and everything. Everything that this gentleman has said to me publicly or privately, when I do my fact check, he lies to me all the time. And this is why I'm coming at him. At one point, um, I actually was saying that Mark Bentley should be the person to become the next prime minister instead of Sean Richards. That is what I was saying. It's during the pandemic with everything that we went through in 2020. And I realized that this guy, he just there not doing any work and expect to be paid. So everything I brought to the attention, they did not do anything about it. The big thing for me back in 2020, uh, 2021, I don't remember exactly which year, but that is when I went into overdrive with my campaign, is when there was three individuals who was arrested for carrying a placard. I think it was on Independence Day on the eve of Independence. That was locked away for three days, for an entire weekend. People were tear gas. And I call every number I had because I had every politician number from the prime minister down. And nobody took my call except Vance and me. And when, when Vance Emery spoke to me, he said, DJ, I understand what you're saying. I am against what took place, but I am not in government. I am just an ambassador. I am just here as a messenger. When you come home, we will talk. And this was a message in WhatsApp. So I'm not in line. I can show you the WhatsApp. After I could not get in touch with anyone in St. Kitts, I thought the best thing to do was to reach out to our ambassador here in New York, which is Ian Patches Library, who showed no interest in what was taking place. The only interest he showed in cussing the citizens, cussing us, telling us 98% of us, if you do a common sense test, we fail it. We went down to the mission to demonstrate, to show some support. We had one Alva Pemberton who was supposed to be diaspora director down there who's supposed to assist our people instead of him listening to me i take the letter from me to give to patches that we had alva took pictures and went inside and tell the security to go and remove us from the sidewalk a sidewalk where in america you know freedom of speech freedom of right to protest nobody could move you he called the un security and us instead of listening to us it wasn't an easy road and a rebel 
And the problem is, I understand with the divisions are concerned, you know, because the people who was not supporting the drive, who was not supporting the move, who was cursing Dr. Joe, say he can win his seat, how you expect to win leadership, how you expect to become prime minister, is them saying people are benefiting now. Many people who campaign against Dr. Joe and the Labour Party are now in position and causing problems. So just as you are calling on your NRP to calm down and call off their dogs and just focus, I am calling on the Prime Minister and the Labour Party to do the same. It does not sound good on Facebook. I am on Facebook. Some of the nonsense I'm hearing on Facebook, it doesn't make sense. You got people all over the world listen to what is going on and think St. Kitts, what, what is going on in St. Kitts? A lot can say it right. Only in St. Christopher, people does not understand. Before we move on to the next topic, Brother Perry, I want to show you an example. On August 5th, 2022, we had the federal elections. There was a heavy campaign. CCM under the leadership of Premier Brantley, Baby Brantley, as I call him. Sean Richards, the leader of PAM. I was over in Old Road, traveling virtual area there and the lawn. When Mark Brantley came down and put down his speech, showing his support for Sean Richards as the next prime minister, he promised he'll bring down three seats from Nevis. And Pam only have to come with three for them to form the government. They cost the hell out of Dr. Joe and the Labour Party. People got to understand, I don't think Dr. Joe don't know that and Douglas don't know. If I know this, they know it as well. It was a serious campaign against the Labour Party. When Dr. Janice Daniels says that NRP going to stay neutral and support whichever government is in power, I had a problem with it, but I understood what she was saying. And I said what I had to say on this program. And once the dust settled, I reached out to Janice and I said, listen, at the end of the day, you and I did not agree on your position for the federal elections. But I know NRP is best for Nevis right now. CCM is not good for Nevis at the moment under the leadership of Mark Grantley. Nevis needed a reprieve. So I am supporting the NRP. That was my position. So. If the CCM under the leadership of Mark Brantley took such a position and cussed the hell out of Labour Party and myself, call me all kind of names. I'm broadcasting from a garage, I'm broadcasting from an addict in America, ignore the noise. <laughs> all kind of nonsense. I don't understand why the people of Nevis would think that Dr. Joe and the Labour Party would just but, sit in bed with Mark Brantley because they forgive him. There's no forgiveness for Mark Brantley. Well, you, you know, Marisha, um, you have to accept that the people on the road may not be, would not be reading the politics like you and I would. And so the, the, the powers that be need to engage them All right. and help them to understand how it works. Um, you, 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 Dr. Joseph just, just can't come up and beat up Mark Brantley. Um, he, he has to work with the Nevis Island administration. Who is the head of the Nevis Island administration? Is Mark Brantley. Right. But I am quite sure the persons in, la in the Labour Party know the man. They know his history. They know what he has done to a number of politicians. You know, the, the, the people speak about bringing down Labour. But I know that it was, a, it was a full cabal that organized not only to bring labor down, but to bring NRP down. Yep. The, the strategy was simple. Destroy NRP, and then you'll be able to deal with labor. That was the strategy. And they, they could talk about the court case as much as they like. They could accuse us of all kinds of things. I know that that electoral office was, was, was uh, mismanaged. I know what happened in the post office. I know. And I know why we eventually got thrown out of government. You had old politicians. You had new politicians. You had people in St. Kitts who had influence over the judici judiciary. All of them allied together to work 
to bring down NRP Nevis, and then they went for Labour. And you think yeah. Labour don't know that? You don't think you, you think Douglas don't know that? I know it. I know it. And you <laughs> must see, know it's, it. it's clear. It's clear now. You know, it's very clear. <laughs> um, the picture is there, and you know. What is amazing about the program? I'm going to start playing some clips now that you, you would understand me. I'm going with this conversation. Because some of these activists are pundits. I respect them because I know they mean well. But some people, you cannot make them love somebody if they don't love them. And I do not know why. The hatred for NRP is as strong among some people. So strong as among some people. And I ask the question, is it NRP that they hate? Or uh, do they hate Dr. Janice Daniel? Or uh, they just hate Nevis? Because these same people who now have so much to say during the campaign, the federal campaign, during the local campaign, they appear here in this program with me. I want to beg them to talk about what is happening, the wrongs that is taking place with the current administration, which is led by Mark Bankley. They don't know enough about Nevis politics to talk about it. But whenever there's something affecting NRP, they got a whole ton of things to say. Well, I, I can't speak to the day, but I can speak to one or two persons who have always had a problem with NRP, Marishaw. In 2007, when Malcolm passed away, uh, we had a by-election. And members of the Defense Force came over on election day and harassed our persons who are taking people to the polls and elsewhere. Put them on the ground and shackle them. And that came from a politician. That didn't just happen. I, I spoke to Dr. Douglas about it afterwards. It didn't just happen like that. So I know that there are people who are determined but to bring in not, down. not interrupting you, but that politician you're talking about, you know, we like to take talk things straight from people now what's going on. That minister was the national security Dwyer Astafan at the time. Isn't so? He was he was the national security officer, yes. Okay, so let the people know what we're talking about. We're not talking in the ring. The national security administrator at the time was Dwyer Astafan during the time that you are speaking about this matter. Well, well, you know, I don't really call names. You know, well, I call them on this program because I'm playing. <laughs> I, got, I will call the name. Once I know the story, I don't call the name. So keep going, um, sir. Yeah. Right. Well, um, there, there is this determined effort. I I heard an analysis um, from the lady from um, um, Grenada. She was interviewing um, Dwyer. And I, I, I listened very closely. I listened to all three and uh, all three programs. I listened to Cleon Stapleton. I listened to Peter Wickham. And I listened to Dwyer. Uh, I heard Dwyer talking about um, a three-way race in St. Thomas's in the next election, and uh, maybe this would happen or that would happen. Marisha, I am from St. Thomas's. I was born in St. Thomas's. I grew up in St. Thomas's. I live in St. Thomas's. I know St. Thomas's people. Only one party is going to win in this place here, NRP. NRP is green, St. Thomas is green. The first leader came from, from St. Thomas's. And everything about, about NRP um, has embraced St. Thomas's Parish. Even people right now who feel a little disillusioned, a little let down, they are NRP supporters and they will vote for NRP. All I want is one thing I want from, 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 from um, Drew, Dr. Drew, that the electoral office, clean it up. That's all I want. Clean it up. And he promised that will be done in, in, in Drew. Of course, the AG also promised that. And I, I see some work out of foot to deal with it. But um, Brother Parry, you spoke about that um, interview with Dwyer. I have my receipts, so we're going to play those clips. But it's not just Dwyer. My brother, dear brother, Sam Kanda, these are people that I love and respect. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes I get goosebumps when I listen to these guys talking now, whether I'm Freedom FM or wherever they're doing this stuff. Because we work together. I invite them into my world. I started a group chat to get rid of the corruption and the nonsense. Mark Brantley, baby Brantley, was a part of that tri-party. So how all of a sudden everything is okay with him? Why they continue to support the corruption? And I cannot just say it and don't talk about what is going on at the Alexandria Hospital, what is going on at the airport, 
What is going on with the supposition office? Only in Nevis, these things could happen and they get away with it. Why Nevis people are so nice? I know, I know because the Nevis is nice. I, but it I, comes I, a time when you have to put your niceness aside. Let me tell you that um, the Nevisians rejected CCM at the polls in the local election. The people who live on the island, the majority of them by far rejected CCM. NRP did not have, I, I, I read some article did it about NRP having money. NRP didn't have any money. I know that for a fact. NRP didn't have any money to, to put full support behind his candidates. They got, they got bits here and bits there and everywhere. CCM is the one who brought in the people. I don't mind divisions coming into vote. I don't mind that at all. But when you're going to have planes flying in, flying in from the Dominican Republic, who are they? Who, what, what connection do they have to Nevis? I listened to a program by Dwyer the other day, and Dwyer said, how come some of them are so fair? Well, people went down to, to the, the, the Dominican Republic fair. Um, these are people coming in brown skin, high colored people who don't know a thing about Nevis. I don't know how they got passports for St. Peter Nevis. So I, some of them come to vote and they don't even know who they're voting for. They don't I even know where to go. I witnessed that for myself. I spent some good time at the electoral office in St. Kitts. And I, as you said, I saw something on Facebook earlier about someone from the electoral office that is um, putting up some stuff there that what was done. They remove apparently a supervisor of elections and put one there who, did, who wasn't any better. Did maybe worse than the one who was the original. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate because as Dr. Ju spoke, Prime Minister Ju spoke about the fake marriages. The fake marriages was not just in St. Kitts. My good brethren there, um, brother Larry Vaughan. Larry Vaughan spoke about the three areas where these fake um, marriages and these um, foreigners came in. There was two particular seat uh, polling um, areas in St. Kitts and one in Nevis. And at the end of the day, if this investigation finishes in swift time, there will be a by-election. And people need to go to jail in our brother Parry. We got people here in America, right here in New York area, where I'm at, who lie to Congress and lie to um, people here about certain things that they're doing. And they're going to, they're getting a um, charge and process for less than what's going on in Nevis. So Absolutely. this good Absolutely. governor's agenda and the freedom of information and this ombudsman. I, I, I spoke to Janice already. We need to cut out the talking. Leave the Facebook alone and let's get to work. Let us demand to see where the money went. Remember the former Hagena, the former head of government. He came across to Nevis, I understand, to check and see where the money was going because he sent over 400 million over there and he ain't seen them to show for it. And I took a drive across there and the police station where the fire truck should be parked. I lucky that my little SUV could fit in there. <laughs> well, well um, that's an interesting situation. And you know what? There's nothing strange about that. There's nothing strange about that. This political party um, that has been in government since year. Again and again, they have done things on this for the moment. They have done things for political reasons, not because they, they, they want to achieve anything for the people of Nevis. There is a road that runs from Five Turning, Cotton Ground, to the airport. That road was constructed in 2000. You know why it was constructed? So that funds could be made available for system to, um, to, to, to um, carry out the election. I know that for a fact. I know that it has brought to my attention. No wonder, you know what has happened to that road? They have had to do it over. That road is no longer there. There's a new road there now. They brought in a construction company that did not have the prerequisites to the roads. And so in a matter of no time, the, 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 especially in the area of Nelson Spring there, the road started to lift and deep potholes appeared all over the place. They had to bring in the, the company from Jamaica um, to do the work again. They're still, in fact, they're still out there um, doing drains and all kinds of things. Um, the second time around to do the road. Um, the hospital is the same thing. When you check out the hospital, they, 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 either there was no understanding or nobody cared much about the hospital. All they wanted to do is to make sure there was some money. Um, can you imagine that the hospital has been done and they had, had to do it over 
they had to break down, et cetera, et cetera. Can you imagine that a company has not been hired from the state to work out how they're going to do the internal part of, of the hospital? And that there are people who are advising that, that the best thing to do is to push the building out. And so, so much money has been spent and much more will be spent. Um, people, people, maybe people uh, are, are, are not as easy as you think. They don't make a lot of noise, but they act when they have to act. And they have acted. They acted last year and they will act again. I, I ha, I'm in Nevis now for the last few months. And I sense the disgust. I sense the despair. I sense the dissatisfaction with the corruption that is before them. I hear them talk. I hear them talk. But as I, I, the third time I'm saying it, the electoral office has to be properly managed. The electoral list needs to be cleaned up. Because that is where the election is won and lost. That it is where it's won and lost. And the, we need electoral reform anyway. We need electoral reform. We, 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 we need to make sure a newness is done and certain things are put in place that elections can be fair. You can't have because a political party is in power, they can uh, ensure that they win the election. That is not democracy. It has to stop. And Dr. Drew and, and the Labour Party campaign on that, and I'm holding their feet to the fire. Same here. Um, I see the sun is, is setting behind you there in Nevis. If there's a light in the area where you are there, ask your partner or your kid to turn it on that we could see your face properly, please, because we, you're, having a, you're having a good conversation and I want the folks to see your face yeah, properly. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're going to turn the light on. Okay. Brother Parry, you, you, know, you know what is hard for me? Not that the one in the bedroom. What, what, what is so hard for me is that... Yeah. What is so hard for me is that when I look at my good friends, and I call them my good friends because we work very hard to save St. Kitts Nevis from the former administration. And nobody's going to tell me how hard Dwyer Astafan, Sam Kanda, Larry Vaughan, Dr. Martin, Ira, Ira McMahon, Douglas Watley, Big Lice, the Talk Puppy, nobody could tell me how hard they work to change the status quo they was there with me all the way when i needed them on this program they was there at my beck and call to um assist me in bringing the message now i could go as far as saying this and i respect these guys so much more and that they have a good heart i came down to think it's for the elections with no intention to stick around for the swear within ceremony so the date of the ret of my return was on the day they were swearing in the prime minister at Warner Park. And when these guys realized that I was leaving prior to the swearing in, Dwyer was the one that le led the charge. He said, Mr. Marisha, you cannot put in all of this work and you're not here for the swearing in ceremony. You have to stay here for the swearing in. And I said to him, I said, Dwyer, tickets are expensive. Airline tickets are expensive. I already, I already have my ticket book to return, so I'm leaving. And those guys got together and they decided that they will purchase my one-way ticket back to New York. Whatever the cost, they will pay for the ticket. They just want me to agree to change in my mind and leave after. And Brother Parry, they, they, they actually called me into a meeting at Sam Kanda's house, and we had the conversation. And I agree to it. Them guys put the money together. And the, the one where ticket back to New York cost more than my round trip ticket. Okay. You understand? So I give, I them, I, give, I give them credit for their genuinity and their support <laughs> of me and stuff like that. But what I'm having a problem with, with um, Dr. Martin and Sam Kanda and Dwyer Astafan is why is it so hard for them to call out the wrongs of Mark Brantley and the CCM party with what is taking place in Nevis. Okay. Ira, if you listen to Ira, Ira is a very fair guy, you know. Ira opened up on certain things, but for whatever reason, Mark Brantley, friends, our saviors, I think, is Dwyer Astafan, Sam Kanda. And for some reason, when I look at Dr. Martin, my cousin, I question their motives because. <laughs> What they're saying on social media uh, and their radio station and talk show, these folks are to understand that people are listening to us. 
and people are putting what we are saying to their thoughts and to see what makes sense and what don't make sense. Yeah, the lighting is good. You understand? The, the, the problem is we have to forget about us and do what is best for country. I'm going to play this clip, so we're going to have a conversation because... Before you play the clip, I have to... Sam is my friend. I'm, I don't know. I haven't been following Sam recently. I must find out from him personally what is happening. Now. Well, I, well, I, I got something here for you. You're, you're going to hear for yourself. <laughs> you're going to hear for yourself. Sam is my friend too. His okay. wife is my friend. His son is my friend. When I got to St. Kitts, they take care of me well. But like Sam said, there's transactional things. And right now, Sam is transactional. Sam say he's a professional, and I asked him before, professional what? Because I see him biting up his tongue and biting up his teeth when I ask him simple question. And this dibble dabble dibble dabbing, the attack on NRP with, with them, I have a problem with it. And I'm making it known public. This ain't a private thing. They know how I feel. This is whether they want to stop talk to me, and that is up to them, you know. Because when I go into that casket, I would have burned me in, a, in, a, in a, a sheet. I'm going by myself. I am going to talk the things the way that I know them to be. And I do not want to see our people be misled. I told Sam before, I prefer for people to be upset with me when I speak and stop talking to me than for me to lie to people and the whole world is misled to think that everything is okay. Everything is not okay in Nevis. Everything is that okay. I have a well, problem. They know, they know that all those names you have called, I know that I think I think Dr. Uh, Martin was born in Nevis and he has friends in Nevis. Sam, Sam, Sam knows Nevis and they know all is not well. I, I don't know. I again, I have been following very closely what is being said. I'm not on Facebook at the moment, um, but they all know, they all know the corruption, they all know who Mark Brantley is. I, I, I don't know what is leading to the exchanges. I don't know the level of the exchanges, but as I said earlier, um, both sides need to cool down, calm down. Both sides need to calm down. Um, not... the, mass, the mass of the people in St. Kitts and the mass of the people in, in, in Nevis um, have an affinity for, uh, for Labour or NRP. So the, 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 um, the, the backers and the leaders need to understand that. Yeah. Those people, let me tell you something about ordinary people. They have native intelligence, you know, and, 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 and they know when you talk to them, they know what is wrong and what is right, and they know what's going on. So let us not underestimate the ordinary people in St. Kitts and Nevis. They know, they know. Definitely. I, and, and that is why I am saying that um, for some of our people that they know, what they are saying is wrong and it's misleading. It better they don't say anything. I would have preferred that Dwyer, Astafan, and Sam Kanda continue saying they don't know enough about Nevis politics instead of getting in there and trying to look like NRP is causing a problem. The constitution speaks for itself. Brother Parry, I went as far as request a copy of your NRP constitution. I read it from front to back before getting to a conversation. The Labour Constitution is there. The St. Kitts Nevis Constitution, I have it there. Basically, nothing is changed. What about rules of order is what basic is parliamentary procedures. So why is it so hard for them to just call a, a spade a spade? Why every opportunity to bring down the NRP, they jump at it, whether it's positive or not. But yet, when the other party doing their own, they cannot do it. So let's jump into these clips, Brother Parry, because um, I want people to understand my frustration. And if I didn't care about these guys and love these guys, I wouldn't be frustrated like this, you know. Your hand is black in your screen. I do not know who is holding the camera. It's black uh, in your face. It's, it's me, sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, if I didn't love these guys so much and care about them, I would just say to hell with it and move on. If I didn't love the Federation as much as I do, and if I didn't want to see good for the people of Nevis, I would forget about it and just move on. But I know we could do better than we are doing. I grew up in St. Paul's. I know the struggle. Yeah, then and Dr. Douglas and I, before he, he ever thought about being a doctor, his father was a tailor. My yeah. mother, my grandmother was a seamstress. My grandmother sewed dresses and shirts. So he would have got his shirt and his, and his um, dress, I mean, his shirt and other stuff sewn by my grandmother. While his father was a tailor, he made pants. Turn, turn, turn your device the next one you had it before. 
And mm -hmm. basically his father would have sewn my, um, my khaki pants for, for my high school. So I'm just you devise the next part. I'm going to play this um the way you had it before. I'm going to play this clip with Dwyer Stefani and the narrative, and we'll have a conversation. Your um your picture is on the uh, line down. It's cross. You need to turn the camera around. The Nevis Reformation Party Perfect. has finally rendered a Perfect. decision in the case of Cleone. Stapleton Simmons, uh, the former member who was uh, suspended in February after she failed to uh, support the leader of the NRP, uh, Dr. Janice Hodge, as leader of the opposition. Both women uh, won two seats under the banner of the NRP in the last uh, Island, Nevis Island Assembly elections that took place. Now, because of the rift between them, the uh, Nevis Island Assembly has remained without an opposition leader for several months now. And just a few days ago, uh, Nevis Premier Mark Brantley announced that he was closing the official office of the leader of the opposition, which is paid for by the Nevis Island government, because both women are at an impasse and uh, they are going nowhere on the matter. Both remain in the opposition, but no opposition leader. Joining me on the program now is Do I Ask the Fan of St. Kitts and Nevis to talk to us about this move now by the uh, NRP, which may not be a surprise to anyone, uh, that uh, Cleone Stapleton Simmons has been officially expelled from the uh, Nevis Reformation Party. She's now an independent in the Nevis Island Assembly. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Um, well, uh, w uh, no one uh, is surprised, I'm sure. People were expecting that that was the next step that uh, they would take in the NRP to expel uh, Ms. Uh, Stapleton Simmons from uh, the, the party because of the impasse that exists between uh, her and uh, Janice Hodge. The, the, is this going to change anything? Does it make a difference at this point? If it does make a difference, it's going to be prospective. And by that I mean, what happens at the next election? That particular constituency has been an NRP stronghold from day one. Ms. Simmons is no longer a voice for the NRP. We've heard a lot of talk about the misgivings, internal misgivings among people in the NRP. Uh, Miss, Miss Simmons was on a program in Nevis last night. And I'm sure when she comes to speak to you, she will tell you some things that she said last night. But the picture is that there were personality and other clashes that led inevitably to what has happened. For me, the interest is what's going to happen going forward. The NRP has not done itself any favors. It has not demonstrated the ability in this circumstance to find compromise and fix the situation so that the NRP would be effective in the parliament with two representatives and a leader plus a senator. If Ms. Simmons works well with the incumbents led by Mr. Brantley and does good things in that constituency and can do good things to her political profile nationally, she might do not too badly in the next election, God spare life. running as an independent or running under a different party's banner, not necessarily the banner of the CCM incumbents. If there is a three-way race in that constituency, anybody could win it. And so the particular interest for me is not what has happened because we've gone over that and the personality conflicts and the egos and all of those things is what's going to happen coming up. 
And so I see the prospect of a very interesting contest in that constituency the next time the voters have a chance to exercise their franchise. So you believe what, what, what is now an NRP stronghold, uh, District 5, is it, um, could end up um, changing hands if, if uh, Stapleton could. Simmons is able to um, position herself well enough with, with, um, with the CCM and, and in terms of access of resources for her district? And the CCM may or may not have an interest in running her as a candidate. So the CCM really is holding the cards in its hands now and can play a consequential role in what happens in number five going forward. That to me is where the interest really is, yes. Um, I, 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 I believe the NRP may have played itself out of a seat, not necessarily, but may have. Time will tell. And number seven, I believe it was, uh, that, that is being challenged in the court. Um, what are the scenarios there? If we see, you know, a court, court battle may take a while, but uh, if it's resolved in the court and the decision comes down, that... Number seven? Oh, I, I, probably seven? Got, I, I probably got it wrong. The district that is being um, contested... I think it was number one. Number one, be, being disputed by the, by the NRP. Um, but I don't it, think that is going anywhere. I don't think that's going in. So you don't think that's in play? No, no, no. No, 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 no. It might have been in play if the NRP had strategized more prudently and with the candidate they used or with another candidate who we are told had polled internally better than the person whom the NRP had put forward as the candidate, but who was not chosen as the candidate in that election. But that's not in play. That's, 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 that's a done deal. You don't, you, you, you don't believe that, that the court will rule that, the, that there, there were discrepancies, uh, in, um, rule in favor of the claims of discrepancies in that district? It's not and... going anywhere. It's hmm. not going anywhere. Let's put it that way. That's my view of it. So you say that the NRP has probably uh, uh, played themselves out of a seat. Possibly, With, possibly. Po possibly, could possibly have done that. In the next elections, if it turns out to be so, what does it mean for the numbers for the NRP? Zero. Out of possibly the assembly. Poss possibly yes. out of the assembly. Yes, because... Mrs. Janice Hodge, the leader, she won by eight votes. There is going to be political fallout to the detriment of the NRP from all of these shenanigans and all of this brouhaha. People are going to say, well, this was not manageable by her and by her party. Her party is not together. And the political narrative can be structured to make that party look incompetent and unsuited for the responsibilities of governing navies so they really have a lot of work to do to regain credibility and to fortify their base i see things going in the opposite direction when let's face it a few months ago they had such a wonderful chance to win the election if they had strategized you know hindsight is 2020 but if they had strategized better in number one let us presume the information that i have is correct we just presume that the other person who was being pushed as a candidate and i think supported by cleon simmons rejected she he had done better than the lady who eventually ran and she lost by what 20 odd votes suppose the nrp had chosen him instead or yes they chose her 
Suppose they had channeled more resources into number one. The outcome could have been three, two for the NRP. They may have to wait for 10 years for that to happen again. So none of this reflects flatteringly on the NRP and its leadership. Would a change of leadership be something that the NRP needs to seriously consider for its viability going forward? Well, the leader is about 60 years old. She just won a seat. Um, it might be premature for us to deliberate that in a serious manner, but it won't be long before that conversation arises. I don't know to what level of seriousness the conversation will rise, but the goings on of the last several months suggest that all is not well in that organization. And the leader has to take responsibility for her organization. And if she can't manage it, then they have to look around for other people. I'm not saying that will happen now, but it will happen sooner or later. It will happen sooner or later. You see another thing, Calistro, maybe this emphasis, even obsession on running a full slate, almost a full slate of female candidates was misguided. Why is that? Well, if, for example, in number one, there was a male, and I'm just saying if, I don't have the empirical data in front of me, but if it is true that a gentleman had done better than J.D. Keynes in a poll in number one, which suggests to me, as somebody who has been in politics, the probability that he would have done better than her in the general election, well, in the Nevis election, and number one was close, then why was he not chosen? Why was Miss Keynes chosen over him? Why was this emphasis, the narrative, so much on women, women, women? Not everybody likes that. It is true. Everybody must have a fear, sheer, and fear access to everything in the country. But if you are going to accentuate it based on gender, then there's going to be some backlash whether it's male or female. And in politics, you don't try to alienate people unnecessarily. Which to so, me might be another reflection of less than the best quality judgment for the political strategists and decision makers in the NRP. So do you believe that they sacrificed running more viable candidates in order to fulfill some sort of uh, gender agenda? Well, I don't necessarily believe that. But I, 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 I could be inclined to believe that the selection process was not as strategically prudent as it could have been. Not just the selection process, but the strategies and tactics used because the election demonstrated that the CCM was there for the taking. The government was there for the taking. Any election that is so close means that anybody could have won it. And if they didn't win the election, then they have to examine themselves as to why. And they need to be honest in this examination. Where did we go wrong? Who made these mistakes? Can these things be allowed to continue? Can these persons be allowed to continue? They have a lot of questions to ask and a lot of questions to answer. And I have heard people 
who support them quietly, who are very disappointed that this matter was not resolved. And there's going to be pushback both on the NRP and its leader and on Miss Simmons. There'll be pushback on both. Who does that strengthen? CCM. But how do you how do you reach a compromise when both women are standing their ground? I mean what what, what, what was the path to resolution there? Saying, okay, well, share the opposition leader position, you'll be opposition leader for half no. the term. And Ms. Simmons said, Ms. Simmons said last night on radio that she was willing to go past that. She wanted to have a say in the determination of the senator, the, the selection of the senator. Two names, according to her, were floated one of them a Mr. Bartlett, another one a Miss Merchant. I think Mr. Bartlett was the person that Miss Cleon Stapleton was promoting. Neither of them was accepted. Recommendation was made and more new names were added. Miss Stapleton said last night on the radio that she was not included in that conversation. So the stiff neck approach can be pointed at both the leader and Miss Simmons, perhaps more so on the leader. I don't believe Miss Simmons was expecting to become the leader. What I presume she was doing a strategy was to use that as a negotiating chip to say, okay, I have the most experience. Let me be the leader. They will say, well, no, that's not how it's done. The leader of the party wins a seat. She's the leader. Okay, well, I would like this person to be the senator. Well, that's a conversation you can have. And if that person is the right person for the party, then you choose him or uh her. -huh. But Miss Simmons, if you believe what she's saying, you might feel that she was kind of shunted out from the inner circle that made the ultimate decisions. Again, Mark Brantley can sit down and smile. It's all be and I, I, the leader of the opposition office was only opened by Mr. Brantley as a gesture, a goodwill gesture. Because when he did so, the only member of the opposition was Mr. Joseph Parry. And in order to be named leader of the opposition, you have to have the support of at least one other person. And there was no such other person on the opposition side but him. So it was a goodwill gesture by Mr. Brantley. And I'm not taking sides. It's obvious. And so even, not, e even, yeah. even when uh, Stapleton Simmons um, won in a by-election, she still wasn't the opposition leader. She was, uh, um, and it, it was the same scenario. She was the only one. She was the only one. So she could not have yeah. been, she could not have Correct. been nominated as a leader of the Correct. opposition. Correct. No, um, it, 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 it would not have been the right thing for her to be opposition leader. The leader of the party, um, Dr. Daniel Hodge, she should be the opposition leader. But that does not stand alone. There's another aspect, the senator. And that I think is where everything fell down. Not that there had not been misgivings before because Ms. Simmons will say also that she did not get much support from the party in terms of finances and other resources to campaign in her constituency. So this, they, there's more to it than we are being told. So my interest really is going forward. What will happen in five years time? And the scenario that I just outlined to you, 
is what I think will happen. If Miss Simmons gets assistance from Brantley's administration and she can do things in her constituency, and if the geothermal project gets fully underway and a number of jobs are created and the economy becomes more robust, that is even more pressure on the NRP and Ms. Hodge and a greater opportunity for that seat in number five to be lost by the NRP. As a party, what does the NRP do going forward to try to push back against the possibilities that you talk about? They have to sit down and reflect and prioritize. Personalities very often preclude the people's best interests. When people have vaulting ambition, you will have read Macbeth as a schoolgirl. The ambition, the personal ambitions, sometimes destroy the common cause. Cliques in political parties exist, but they do a lot of damage. The NRP has to self-reflect, self-examine, and chart a course forward. And this thing about expulsion and all of this, was that necessary? Couldn't it have just been left alone and suspension and all of these things? It shows to me either an unwillingness or an inability to find compromise. I'm not talking about compromise that includes compromising integrity. I'm talking about the compromise that is absolutely necessary in order to achieve things in the world of politics. And if they are not able to do that, they need a total makeover. And that could take 10 years. Do I ask the fan, I want to thank you so much for joining me on the narrative yet again, political and social commentator in St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you. Yeah, Brother Parry, we just, listened to, we just listened to our interview there with the um, Paris Clarissa of the narrative with Do I ask the fan. It's over 20, 22 minutes and I play it in the full length. You know why? I want the people online to hear Do I ask the fan rambling. For someone who did not know nothing about Nevis politics, the public things that is in the public square about the airport and the um, opposition hospital. office, the hospital in the public square that the entire world know about. Dwyer Astafan did not know enough to have a commentary about it. He did bring it to his attention week after week after week, publicly and privately. He did not know enough to engage in the conversation, whether here or any place else. But he know a lot about the inside business of the NRP. Wherever he get it from, I do not know. But out of that 22 minutes, is only two seconds of that interview that makes sense to me from Dwyer. And that two seconds is when Dwyer stated that the rightful thing to happen was for the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge as the leader of the NRP who is now elected should have been the leader of the opposition. That is the only thing he said to me that makes sense here. And if Doya Astafan now will follow Cleone's mantra that the constitution of the day, which is the federal constitution and the NIA constitution takes precedence over the NRP constitution. Let's give her that, if that's the road she want to travel then don't that constitution say that the leader of the opposition will give notice to the governor general or whoever of the person that will be a senator? You saw this people have to create confusion unnecessarily? Uh, you know, you know um, I listened attentively to 
what do I said? I, I obviously, I thought I had heard the whole tape, but I did. And um, I want to make this comment, uh, Marisha. The state's constitution is the state constitution, and the NRP constitution is the NRP constitution. The NRP is a political party. It has laws and regulations to govern it. And if you decide to be a candidate for NRP, those laws and regulations apply to you. You go to the public and you tell the public you're an NRP. You tell the public that the CCM is no good. You tell the public that you are a better alternative. After the election, you cannot dismiss them, turn around and honestly dismiss the NRP constitution and claim that is the state's constitution you're running on. Anybody can do that, then you know, Marisha. And it makes nonsense of political parties, it makes total nonsense of them. So I would not expect anybody to condone that. I, 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 I never supported it and I do, I do not support it. It leads to confusion and it leads to chaos. I think Peter Wickham's um, interview was a better one in that he realized it was a power play. Yeah. He realized it was a power play. He realized that the advice given to the young lady was bad and it was not properly executed. And there lies the problem. There lies the problem. Many, too many persons sought to advise, too many people got involved. And you know what was one of the problems? Some people got into their heads that Janice was pro Timothy and it caused all kinds of fears and all kinds of concerns. I don't. First of all, is Timothy still a factor? I don't know. It don't seem so to me. From my so, view, from my view, he's not. So I don't know what all this talk is about Timothy and all the going on is about Timothy. To me, it's just an, it's just an excuse. And, and we need to rid ourselves of, of that excuse. Um, his analysis about what could, what could happen, um, anything from a, a theoretical point of view can happen. But let me tell you something. The people of St. Thomas's have been coming to me and people who are sympathetic to Cleon and Laika and I like her too. Those people have said they are NRP and they will vote for NRP. I would never advise that young lady to run independent. Um, I don't want to see her destroyed. I would not like to see her destroyed. Some people really don't care. They will want to use it if they can. And this, this, this talk about Mark Brantley having the upper hand. Tell you something, Marsha, there's something known as momentum, you hear me? And the momentum against Mark Brantley has started and he's not going to stop until he's out of power. For sure. You take that from me. That I'm sure about. That I am sure about, my brother. But you know, the three main clips I want to play tonight, you know, I played Dwyer first because Dwyer started off on Tuesday evening with his rambling. But, but you call it rambling, but Dwyer has sought to speak on Nevis, about Nevis, in terms of somebody who is familiar Correct. with what is going on. Correct. And he said he did not know enough about the Nevis politics to speak on it, but he, know, he seems to know a lot. He spoke a lot. He spoke a lot. And some of the things he said, somebody told him, I don't know who. I don't know how he got that information, but somebody told him. <laughs> because I am here and I've heard some of those, some of those views expressed as well. And um, you could own, people could only know certain things if they're told by somebody else. All right. that, 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 that is my concern. So I, want to, I don't really want to know, but I, I am, I, 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 I asked myself the question, who did? How did he get some of the information? And was the information accurate? I don't know if the information was accurate. I'm not sure the information was accurate. To keep talking about Janice Daniel and to keep speaking about her capacity to lead and to, put, to, 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 to um, present it in a negative way, I, 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 I really don't think that was necessary. The yeah. other thing is, the other thing is this, um, uh, Marisha. She is the leader of the party. They went into the election knowing that either she was going to be the premier or the leader of the opposition. So that matter really was not one for consideration. It is also customary 
that the leader chooses the nominated member. You don't, you, if you, there are three of you in the parliament, do you want to go in the parliament with you standing alone as leader and, 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 and the, 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 the nominated member is chosen by the other member? What does that say in terms of representation and presentation? Is your views, would your views with, um, predominate or would the views of the other person um, take precedence? Um, those, are, those are all considerations. And I would have hoped that the analysis coming from a politician of St. Kitts and Nevis would examine those situations and see why it was necessary for the leader to choose the nominated member. Now, um, that is not to say that you, you, whether you like one or you like the other, but it is just logical. It is just logical. The mm -hmm. other point is um, you, the, the state's constitution takes predominance. When you are elected, um, you, you, you don't have to support the leader. But remember, you run on the basis that you support the leader. Yeah. And you did terms and conditions before. So the, 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 there is um, a, 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 little, a, a little something there that is being overlooked by, 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 by certain parties. Let that happen in the Labour Party. Let that happen in CCM. Let that happen in PAM and you see what happened. The other thing is, um, I, I, I don't necessarily support, support that she had to be expelled. I would have hoped that the earlier club, some senior persons could have got involved and solved the problem, but it didn't happen. And it didn't happen, that is God. But is she is not the first person to leave the had to leave a party. Uh, in the Labour Party, got rid of, of, of Tim. Is the Labour Party in government today? Pam got rid of Powell. Wasn't Pam in government sometime recently? You know, you know, um, the, 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 again, all these talks and all these uh, analyses and so overlook public, public opinion, how the public feels. And the public is the one that determines who becomes um, leader and which party takes over. The people of Nevis are tired of Mark Brantley. They are weary, they are frustrated, they want a change. They want a change. Let the, wh why are they not talking about the electoral office? When I hear Doya talk, it's not as if it was a free election, as if the electoral office was perfect and so on. That bothers me because he knows better. He knows better. And everybody thinks it's not better because the Labour Party campaign and the fact that the electoral office in think it was not was, was, was corrupt. So you think the one in Nevis was not corrupt? If it's the same party, the same um, unity the party, you think it wasn't power? You think people were not being registered who shouldn't be registered? Um, th these things need to be explored. I, I'm not even interested in the court. I, I, I don't take the court seriously. And I make that statement without any water. Anymore. I don't take the court seriously. The matters have to be dealt with by the people and the matters must be, be addressed by the politicians who know what's going on and who understand the history of corruption that goes on in these offices. Um, wh why are we not talking about that? We're gonna be talking about um, Cleo should run on a three party thing and we don't know how he's gonna turn out and so on. Let me tell everybody NRP is gonna win the seat. Anybody who feels that NRP is not gonna have no seats, they, they, they have a long, long time to, to wait. And I wanna say this, Marisha, as long as I'm, I'm alive, and I live in St. Thomas's, I will make sure that NRP continues in government, I mean, continues to hold the seat here. You, you think all the work of Simeon Daniel, Ivor Stevens, and your Swanson must go to waste? You think all the work that I have done must go to waste? You, you think that a party that believes in the upliftment of people, peace, progress, and prosperity must die because some people want it to die? You think personalities must take pre precedence over um, ideas, principles, and core values? That can happen, must not happen. And the people, some of the people who are asking for certain things to happen, they think it must remember that Nevis is also part of Sinkis and Nevis. And if you want change in Sinkis, and if you want good governance in Sinkis, it must happen in Nevis. Definitely. It must happen in Nevis. You can you can't hold water in your mouth and whistle. You cannot do it. And, and, and you're right, you know. Uh, listen to politicians who tear Timothy to pieces. Tia Sean to pieces. CCM had three people, three persons in that political party, in that government, not a word. 
not a word. So all the rounds that were done, if there were rounds at all, so these three members in Nevis had nothing to do with it. They were there with their hands folded and, and or praying. That's what they were doing. They were praying and thanking God that they were in St. Kitts, but they did nothing and they know nothing. That's what, that's what was going on. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. And I call every one of them out. I call every one of them out. I call them out. And if they can't be, be straight and honest, leave Nevis alone. If they cannot be straight and honest, if they cannot say what is happening and think is happening in Nevis, leave Nevis alone. Don't pontificate about Janice Daniel and Cleon Simmons and have all kind of things to say. But when it comes to real serious issues, you cannot talk. You cannot talk. Huh? You cannot talk about the hospital. You cannot talk about the race course. You cannot talk about all the different things that are happening, the corruption in the, and in, in the treasury. You can't talk about people um, getting, getting jobs and, 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 and bloating the, 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 the bills and so on. You can't talk about those. You think they're not happening? You think people don't know? You think people don't know? Of course they know. Of course they know. No, but apparently the, the, the situation is, is really bad and Nevis. And like I said, I cannot say it enough. I am quite disappointed in my boy Dwyer and the knowledge he's presenting now that he has because unless he heard this from Mark Brantley last week, because baby Brantley got a way of putting out his things every morning. Because he seems to know a lot in a very short time. So maybe he had a crash, a crash course from baby Brantley. But well, uh, Mr. Mr. Brantley, Mr. Brantley has a job to do. And his job is to distract. His, his, his job is to make people believe that NRP is in confusion. That is his job. I mean, I'm not angry with him for doing that. That is what politicians do. But um, the NRP job is to show how he can run government, to show how his projects uh, can come to fruition. Also, Geothermal comes and, oh, Lord, thank God, Geothermal has come. Who brings Geothermal here? Who blocked Geothermal? Who sent, who sent letters to Washington and, uh, uh, and to Barbados, to the, US, to the US embassy? I was in Washington. I met the, the leader of the Input Export Bank. I know that the opposition CCM sent letters to block that project when I was premier of this country. That was good politics then. Now, you has to try to bring the thermal and Mark is going to get all the credit. Think maybe he's stupid, they're not. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. Well, I am in observation mode, and they said they got the receipts, and I can assure you, I have all my receipts here, they're on my computer, they're on external drive, and if God take me tomorrow morning, you guys could find my receipts here to play them again on future, record, future recording. Because we must not let baby Brantley get away with the corruption that has been dwelt or dealt to the people of Nevis. I have a big problem with it. And I will not stop until the people get what is due to them. Yeah, well, all I have to say, Dominicanos can continue to come here to vote and go back home. I can't go to Santo Domingo and vote. I don't even if I get past the airport. That can't happen. Do something. Dwyer, Sam, um, Dr. Martin, talk about it. Do something about it. It's not good. And, it's not and, good. And my partner, the Big JL, you know, the Big JL has a very good um, program there. And I'm calling on the Big JL to really step it up as a, a, um, a media outlet and what is going on. If you're going to broadcast things and you're going to be talking the things, then, as I said before, if, if Dr. Martin and Sam them, for whatever reason, and Dwyer cannot speak about the wrongs that are going on in Nevis, I have enough information to believe that Ira McMahon will. And I can do it via Zoom, you know. I don't have to be there to do it. I can do it. It's because the thing, facts are there. Again, one thing I don't want. Cleon is a young woman, a young lawyer, and a family. I don't want her to be destroyed. And I, I don't know that the focus should be on her. In fact, she has been expelled from the party. The party should move on. I don't believe that members of the party should continue trying to knock her. Move on, do something positive and leave the young woman alone. That is how I feel. She has done what she did. She also did some good things in the past. Um, I don't know who confused her, who could have confused her, who advised her, I don't know. But let's move on and try to let the young girl thrive, man. You know, let her be a good lawyer. She might be an outstanding lawyer. She might be something. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. All those who want to play politics with the name and twist and turn, leave the woman alone. You know something, brother um, Parry? I could understand what you're saying because at the end of the day, we all have kids, our family members who might have made mistakes and 
they find out too late that they made mistake and want to turn around and do things differently. Where I am concerned, any future uh, participation in the NRP for Cleon should not be. They should not be no exception back into the party. And I said this to you because I did my own evaluation of Cleon long before all of this mess. I met Cleon in person for the first time. The Division for Nevis organization here led by Gene Sider with um, Twiller and um, Hazel Claxton and them. They had um, this event where they had a public meeting at a church. I was asked to stream it live. That's the first time I met Cleon. And just her parents, her dress code. We know that the NRP dress code was green shirt. Everybody came there in their green blouse. She came in, she high enough, whether it was whether it was sky blue or whatever kind of blue. You could see that she was not with it. And her demeanor, her speech, everything. I questioned it after and I told them this lady is not with the NRP. Behind the scenes, I was doing a lot of things to try and help reach folks in the diaspora and try to give some momentum to NRP. And she never supported anything. And I can say this to you, Mr. Parry. I could say it publicly. Janice appeared in this program on many occasions. And I said to her, you need to bring your team that we could have a conversation as a team. And Janice could not commit to that because she was not getting the support of Cleon. Cleon was never with NRP. I understand that you're the one that bring her to the NRP. So I want to believe that at the time, in your judgment, you see someone who could bring some good vibes to NRP. But it became something selfish on her behalf. And yeah, maybe I, that- I, I, maybe, I some, maybe people that seem, some people seem to feel, some people seem to feel that I imposed on NRP. First of all, I tried to find someone to replace me. I spoke to two persons, they weren't interested. I recommended her to the St. Thomas's constituency. I did not plump her down anybody, as people are trying to say. I recommended her to the St. Thomas's constituency and they accepted my recommendation. That is what happened. I have known that young lady since she was um, in primary school. She was in class with my daughter. Um, I know her grandmother, strong supporter of mine and a strong NRP and so on, a strong NRP family. Um, I interviewed her. I looked at how she performed in school and so on, and um, she seemed to be okay. You can't, you can't really tell a person um, properly unless you see them in action. All right. I never saw her in action. And I am, um, I... Maybe I should have stayed close to her, but I didn't believe in that, Marcia. I believe that once she was there, she should have given me the chance to swim. I did not expect um, leadership to come so quickly. Um, the, the leadership of NRP collapsed, and um, there it was. Uh, they needed to have a new election. Maybe that was an unfortunate situation because she needed maybe more time to learn and um, for the party to get stronger, but it did not happen. I, um, I am not, I, if people want to blame me, I take the blame. I'm not going to run from it. I'm not going to run from it. And, and as I said, I don't want to see her destroyed, but I, and she's no longer in the party now, so there's no need, there's no need to fight her down, like, just move on. In, in, in a matter, right now for me, it's not about the blaming. For me, I am happy that you're here. And after this program, you can go and check the trend. Um, you got some great support from the people and people are enjoying the fact that you took the time to come out and speak because people have been saying, why are you so quiet? So I'm going to ask so you this you question. Know, you know why I was so quiet, I told you. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, but I'm saying for the public, I know. But for the general public, just for their yeah. own thing. Um, the situation is this. Um, whatever was happening, I know you had your medical stuff to deal with and you was out of the country and all of that good stuff. We spoke. But I am saying at the time, Mr. Parry, from my experience, from my knowledge, Cleon was not listening to anyone. Cleon was not taking calls. So I'm going to ask you the question. Throughout all of this battle, did you ever have the opportunity to try and reach out to Cleon to see how things could have been settled within the NRP? Well, um, let's put it this way. She and I used to communicate. And um, after time, the communication broke down. 
I, I, I don't want to go into details. I understand. But, uh, I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. There were certain views that I had that maybe she didn't appreciate. And so communication broke down. And um, the, the last communication we had had to do with after the election when she came to me and said she would like to continue as leader of the opposition. And I explained to her that is very unusual because the leader of the party is either the premier or leader of the opposition. And um, I advise her to go and speak to the leader, but do not let this matter become public because I know once it becomes public, the confusion that could be created. Unfortunately, the matter became public. And um, I, was no, I was in no position after that to advise her or to tell her anything. And, and this is what people got to understand, um, Brother Parry, and I appreciate you being honest and upfront, because my view from the very onset, I am of the view that this young lady, I do not know if this came into her head during the trip to Taiwan, or she always had it in her head. I believe had the Nevis, um, the NRP won the Nevis Island election last year, December. I am of the view it would have been a problem for the premier fight as well. The attitude that I was seeing from this young lady. Yeah, I, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, we, but it's just. We, it's can just only read, we can only read it to leave. We can only read it to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So, so Brother Pa, we, we're going to go into Cleo's interview because, like I said, I wanted to drop Dwyer interview first, then I want to drop Cleo and then Brother Wickham and also Sam Kanda. Because. Oh, Sam Kanda has an interview too? Yeah, man. Sam Kanda them have a big thing on ground this as well. I want when you walk the street of Nevis that you enjoy your retirement and you have the full understanding of what's taking place in the public domain. Like I said to Dr. Joe all the time, I am at a paid advisor, but my phone's still ringing 24 7. People call me from England all over the place, wanting to know what the hell is going on. As a matter of fact, people giving me advice of what I should discuss and my <laughs> program. And I tell them, my program is for putting things out there that need to be corrected in the Federation. There are some other stuff that the other radio programs and deal with that. I mean, I deal with them, them kind of conversation there. I deal with the real deal, the real things that need to be adjusted. So let's take a quick listen to Cleon and then we'll move on to Brother Wickham. Stand by. Welcome back to the narrative. I'm your storyteller, Kalishwa Farrier. Cleon Stapleton Simmons officially expelled from the Nevis Reformation Party after her suspension back in February. Simmons has been at an impasse with the leader of the NRP over the position of opposition leader in the Nevis Island Assembly. The, both were unable to see eye to eye and the party was unable to see eye to eye with Ms. Simmons regarding the appointment of a senator and the appointment of opposition leader. Now, following the suspension, Ms. Simmons joins us here on The Narrative to talk about her future in the Nevis Island Assembly, where she is now an independent member of the Assembly, as well as her future in politics and the likely impact on her NRP, well, what used to be her NRP in the future, given this current impasse. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Thank you, Kalistra. Thank you so much for having me. It's indeed a pleasure for me to join you. Well, uh, some are saying that you have you have placed the, 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 the impasse in the situation. You've placed the NRP on very shaky ground um, for the next elections and that the, the, the uh, Concerned Citizens Movement and Mark Brantley, they're smiling all the way to the bank on this because they will benefit um, from all of this confusion that has been going on in the party. What we are hearing is that you would not budge on uh, supporting, which is a constitutional requirement, uh, supporting the leader, uh, Janice Daniel Hodge, to be opposition leader, and that you were insisting that you should be the one to have the final say on who the single senator to be named should be. Is that correct? Um, I, that, that is absolutely not correct. Um, of course, there was an impasse, as you're quite aware of, but in terms of me not budging and not being able to come to a amicable agreement as it relates to the leader of the opposition and as well as the um, nomination of a senator, 
I, I wish to say that at all material times, I have indicated that I do support um, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge to be the leader of the opposition. However, I did offer my support on a conditional basis, whereas I did indicate that I would like to have a say as to who the nominated senator was, and quite naturally so, um, provided that um, in order for Dr. Daniel Hodge to be um, appointed as the leader of the opposition, she will definitely need my support. She cannot do so without my support. So I, I would not say that I have held fast to my stance as it relates to the senator, I have at all material times um, tried my best to negotiate. I'm, as a matter of fact, um, negotiations started even before the parliamentary session, that is the budget um, debate, as well as um, it was continuing. Um, I participated in a mediation session on January 29th, both myself and Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, I'm the leader of NRP, and we were making progress in our negotiations. And then quite surprisingly, um, the negotiations halted. Um, I don't know for what reason, because um, I was expecting that we would have come to some sort of amicable agreement and be able to choose a senator. That did not happen. The party instead opted to take disciplinary actions against me, starting with uh, a suspension which was issued on the 8th of February and then now yesterday, um, well on Saturday, I received notice that on the 28th of April, the executive body of the party upon the recommendation of a disciplinary committee that was instilled in order to, I guess, bring disciplinary or penal actions against me for the stance that I took, that they made the decision to expel me from the party for my failure to support Dr. Daniel Hutch as the leader of the opposition. Why was it so important to you that you have almost the, the final say or the major say in who was nominated as the senator? Uh, Dr. Hodge is the leader of the party. Um, you both won your CTS, but she is the leader of the party. Why did you feel that you needed to be the one to, to, to have the greater power and the greater say in who would be the senator? I say, um, at the end of the day, I, I did not hold fast to, to that condition, but I did not want a situation where um, a senator was appointed and uh, I did not feel comfortable with that person or I was not really involved in the process. And you must understand from my experience in the party that that has been the way that the party do things where decisions are made and you're not necessarily involved in the, in the process. You're basically told that at some point later on that this particular decision was made. So I felt that this was too important um, for me not to have a say and not to be involved in the process because at the end of the day, the condition was that my support was needed. Now, I must say that at no point in time that I could recall that the leader, um, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, actually requested or asked for my support. Okay, the, the, the support was requested or perhaps mandated in, in numerous ways to an executive decision by way of a letter. But in terms of simply sitting down and having a discussion one to one and saying, listen, um, I would like for you to support me. I was told that I should support because um, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge was the leader of the the party. And so therefore that was the expectation. And whilst I, I agree with that, that really is the norm. That does not necessarily mean that, you know, a, a, another MP like myself, an elected member cannot exercise a constitutional discretion. And so perhaps it is something that is um, new to politics. Um, I don't believe it is because at the end of the day, Politics is about negotiation and collaboration and really working not only in the best interests of self, but the best interests of 
self party people and so there are a lot of elements that one really um has to consider when taking these type of, of decision otherwise you can really create an atmosphere where persons are aggrieved and where they feel uncomfortable and i think that that really ought not to be did you back a, a particular person to be nominated as a senator? You, you, you were uh, supporting different, different candidates for nomination yourself and, and Dr. Hodge. Yes, we were. I, I supported from the very onset. I supported uh, Mr. Ronaldo Bartlett to be the senator. I made no secret about that. Um, I disclosed that at the earliest opportunity simply because I felt that he would have contributed uh, or bring something more to the party at that time. I was looking at his energy, the sacrifices that he has had made at a very young age um, for the Nevis Reformation Party, the fact that he had worked in the office of the opposition for a number of years. And he seemed to me that he was always dedicated towards the, the NRP. He did have an interest in being a, a candidate for Nevis 5, for Nevis 1, sorry, that is St. Paul's constituency. And so I felt that he was a, a, a good candidate. I felt that he would have brought youth and young people to the party. And I, I, I believe that it was time for the party to be able to give, you know, young ordinary people an opportunity to serve. And that really was my rational or reasoning for really wanting to, to choose Mr. Bartlett um, to be the senator. Now, of course, um, Dr. Janice Daniel Hart, she had a, um, a person of interest in mind. And I must say, because I think a lot of people miss this point. Um, I was not aware until very late in, in, in the whole process as to who she had in mind for the nominated senator because these matters were never discussed at any length before the election and even after the election. I can't recall participating in any executive dis discussions about who the nominated senator should be or ought to be. And so, you know, it's very strange. It's very strange that people have put a lot of blame and a lot of weight on my decision making, but not looking holistically at the process. It should at the very least be a democratic process. And I believe that any party who is aspiring to go into government should have a more democratic and a more collaborative approach because if you're in opposition it really speaks to how you would conduct yourself in government i mean if we were in government and there was a dispute let's say at the cabinet level between the elected members if one member don't agree with perhaps the premier or the leader um is would would it be the stance where then the entire administration would fall or uh, disciplinary action will be taken against that elected member for perhaps not supporting a uh, cabinet decision. I think the entire approach that the NRP took is absolutely absurd. And it clearly demonstrates that, you know, it is more reflective of a dictatorship approach rather than a democratic or uh, holistic approach. You, you said that the, uh, the discussions with you and Dr. Hodge were amicable, that you, you, you appear to have been making some headway, and then the discussion stalled. Why do you say yes. it was amicable? What, what, was she willing to uh, consider uh, your candidate, whom, if I understand it correctly, was the same gentleman who um, internal polling indicated was the better candidate for District 1? Um, I, I would not say that she agreed that he should be the nominated senator. As a matter of fact, the both persons who we um, we were proposing, we could not agree. And so on January 29th, we had a, a mediation, thanks to a very kind um, gentleman. I am not going to disclose his name without his permission, but he did approach both of us to see whether we can have some amicable discussions in the form of a mediation with both of us having mediators in order to assist us in in arriving at a, a, a amicable you know solution to the impasse um i must say that 
from my experience, um, not even no one from the executive, not the chairman of the party, no one really um, used the, the opportunity to sit both elected members um, down and have a discussion. At the end of the day, for me, I felt it was just um, do as I say or go. And that was the approach that was taken from the very onset. And it leaves one to wonder whether you know this whole issue whether there was ever an intention to resolve it or perhaps you know the did the dr hodge the did dr Sorry? hodge did dr hodge also display this attitude of it's my way or the highway um not initially but i think eventually she she did well once the negotiation ceased because after the me mediation we both agreed that okay we cannot agree on these two persons so we will consider other persons and we had arranged for some deadlines and some dates as to when we could have met um we were unable to meet the week after the mediation session and Subsequent to that, within a matter of days, I received uh, a letter from the executive stating that I was suspended. So in my respectful view, the negotiations halted even without my knowledge. And was there any time when you put on the table that I want to be the opposition leader instead? Because you did indicate earlier that anyone, um, once you won your seat, um, should be eligible to become the opposition leader. Was that ever part of your um, negotiating terms? It, it was initially a proposal that I made from the, the onset. Um, I did inquire from the, um, the leader whether she wanted me to continue taking into consideration that I was already in the parliament. Um, I, I think at this stage I was being re-elected. And so because of the fact that I was the lone member in the parliament and as well as the, the person who was operating in a leadership role in the office of the opposition, I did propose to her whether she wanted me to continue or if she would like to be the leader, then I would certainly um, give her my support. Some may say that that was a sinister request, but um, for me, I don't think it was because if you have someone who is already Indian, who's already operating, then um, I do not think that it was sinister for me to ask for her support. But but but, but, really but, certain, but, but certainly it was a new term, a new election, a new term. Uh, you weren't carrying on from uh, the, the, the period when you were the lone member, opposition member in the assembly. And even when you were the lone mm -hmm. member in the assembly, you were not the opposition leader because it was just one person and the system does not allow for an opposition leader when there's no one else to, to support you, you, you as, as the opposition leader. So you were never the opposition leader. You were simply the only opposition member and using the facility that the premier had made available for your predecessor because um, you won that seat in, in by-election. Uh, so it was a new term. You, were, you weren't yes, carrying I, on. As I, the, you, you were not new to Parliament. Um, you were not new to the Parliament, but certainly you were never the opposition leader. I, I do not dispute that. Of course, I was never the opposition leader. What I'm saying is that you had someone there. I was there as the, the, the face of the opposition, so to speak. Not necessarily the party, but the opposition. So I do not think that it was um, out of order or sinister for me to ask that question. It was a simple um, question or a suggestion. And I indicated from the onset that if it is that... Uh, um, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge would, would like to be the leader, then she would have my full support, provided that I have a say as to who the, the senator is. And for me, um, even today, I do not see anything wrong with that approach because we, we are in a democracy, okay? People can negotiate, people can bargain. If someone needs something from you and the support was needed from me and I was fully aware of that, then we can have a discussion and we can engage in the best interest of the party, in the best interest of the people who I represented.
But did you really want to cooperate with Dr. Hodge and make her the opposition leader, or did you see an avenue where you could frustrate the process? Because, and I get the impression that there were difficulties going back with the party. Um, you, you talked about being excluded from decisions and so. Was this one, you, you, were, you were about to lose the power you had as, as the only opposition member occupying the leader of the opposition's office. Um, uh, w w was that your one bargaining chip to exert some power in a situation where someone else now had the power? I, I do not think so because the power always resonates with me. You know, I was not asking for any support from Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge. She wanted my support. So I don't think it had but this was, to do but, but, but this was your power. this was your party. You went to elections together. You were seeking to be in a government together. Cooperation and working together was had to be the foundation and the basis for the, the, the for what you guys embarked on. And this was your party and your political leader. And you said, "I will not. I will. I will frustrate our efforts in the assembly unless you allow me to have." some power that traditionally resides with the leader of the party. So what, what, I, I, what, did, you, did you see it as an opportunity to change the status quo, or was it just a power play? I don't think it was a power play per se. Some people have viewed it that way. For me, it was a simple matter of, OK, you need my support in order for you to be appointed as the leader. And we both are in this together. So can we have some negotiation? I would like to have a say as to who the senator is. And I do not think respectfully um, that you can hold fast to that view because I have changed my pos position numerous times during the process. I stated um, that I would like to Mr. Bartlett to be the senator. When there was um, some backlash from that, I said, okay, if you, I do not believe in making anybody uncomfortable in parliament, so therefore, let us look at other persons. So I do not believe that this was a power play or anything like that. I believe I understood. So if, well, if you were not, Sorry. if you, if you were not convinced, and this wasn't a matter of conviction, that Mr. Bartlett was the best choice for the people of Nevis in a senatorial position, then... You are simply trying to stop her from being opposition leader. I I do not agree with that. Um, can we no, can we take no, a no, no 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 now you are let, let's move on to you're in you're independent now and uh, there's been a lot of speculation about whether or not you would uh, form an, an an alliance with the with the CCM. Okay, Kalestra, can we take a pause here? Okay. Um, um, please. You, okay, you need some. Okay, you want to end no, the interview or you want to pause? No, I need to pause because I feel that the interview is becoming very combative, and I I was not prepared for this, and I do not want this image of me to be out there. Um, this is not what you know I expected. Yes, you can ask me hard questions, but I felt I just feel like we are arguing too much um, back and forth. And, you know, that's not something that I want to put out there at this point in time. But do you wish to answer the question about the, your, your future in politics and in, district, in, in the district where, where, where you want? It's, it's, a, it's a strong role for the I, NRP. And do you, do, do you intend to contest it as an independent? Have you considered those things? Do you, are you considering uh, uh, an alliance with the CCM? Uh, people have spoken of that, um, or, or joining the CCM, or simply just having an alliance where you'll be able to get resources to your people in, in your district. What's the future for Cleon Simmons in, okay. part, in the can, politics can in Nevis? Can, can, can we stop the interview? Um, I'm not feeling comfortable. Okay. Okay. This is the narrative, and I'm your... Yes, Brother Parry, uh, tap your screen open. Oh, you're open already. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> these folks, a couple of months ago, my boy asked your band his own song. I never heard of a Calypso in that band, this song as yet. But now this lady stopped her interview. Um, I'm just letting you know that I ever get his wish tonight. I'm on overtime again. It's, over, it's past 8 o'clock. And you're not going to stop this interview, you know, so... I need your input on that. That is a good idea. 
You there? Beg pardon, sorry. Yeah, I said um, your input and um, Sister Cleon um, stopping oh, that oh, one interview. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I, if I were advising her, I would have told her not to go on um, these interviews, um, especially regionally. Um, these people have a reputation to protect. And they're not going to serve you um, softballs. They're going to come at you. And they're going to ask questions. And they're going to do the preparation before. And uh, for her to think that she could just go in there and say whatever she wanted to say, and that was that, uh, it was not going to happen. And uh, I didn't hear the one on Vaughn, but um, it seemed that um, she had some difficulty as well. If I were in her position, and I, 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 first of all, I wouldn't have gone on radio, not so soon. And secondly, if I had difficulty on Vaughn, I was not going to go a second time. I think basically she needs to step back and um, do some reflection, some self-examination before she moves forward. And she should know how she's gonna move forward, what she's going to do, it's very important. And she has to stop listening to the noise outside because a lot of these people who are making noise are, are not acting in her best interest. Um, the lady asked some good questions. Um, was it a power play? Um, I suppose it was. Um, I suppose it was. Um, it didn't work. That's what happened. It didn't work. And um, what I would have advised again, um, if I were in her position and I had that situation and I realized that the leader was not budget, I would just back off. I'm 40 years old. She's 60 years old. I have 20 years to play with. I would work on my constituency as I, I advised the earlier clock after, after she lost the um, leadership um, battle. Just focus on your constituency, build your constituency. And when the time comes for leadership again, you, put, you, you present yourself as somebody who has achieved. Yeah, um, don't, don't get into these battles and, and, and these wars one after the other, because in the end, Janice demonstrated that she was more astute and more experience and, and, and Cleon directness as you refreshed in, yes, but it got into trouble. You know, um, the funny thing about it is there were submission questions. Folks wanted to know where is Joseph Parry, why he's so quiet about this whole situation. But I know Cleon was lying all along, just like her advisor, Phoebe Bandy. And you said something earlier that um, she came to you after the election and let you know she had intention of being the um, leader of the opposition and your advisor and it's not a good idea. So why would she come now and say to a regional person that nobody sat down um, her and the other party to discuss this thing? I think you as the person that put her up for recommendation for the party and she came to you and gave you the due diligence of letting you know what he, where her mind is at. I think after you gave her that advice, that should have been it. Well, um, uh, she, she, we have to accept that she was free to make her own mind up and to decide where she wants to go. I could only advise and, and, and that is what I did. Um, it, it's, you, you see, um, she speaks about experience, but you have to accept that um, she was in, not in parliament for any long time. And that argument is not a strong one because it's not how long you serve in parliament or whether you have been a leader in parliament before or otherwise. It is what the people want. The people voted for Janice Daniel as leader of the party to represent them. And the, the matter ends there. I, 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 I could tell you that um, Canvis and, um, and Hanley served in parliament before you ever won, but they never contested on the basis that they had more experience. I wouldn't even mention Dr. Douglas' name. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And I, I, it's so unfortunate. And sometimes, to be frank with you, it's very painful for me to listen and, 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 and see what's going on and, and, and knowing that it's not helping the NRP and it's not helping the people of Mavis. NRP is too poor a party, has done too many things for, 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 for this wrangling to have taken place. Um, but, uh... Um, Barry, Honorable Barry, um, Joseph Barry, I'll be honest with you. If I did not see the damage for myself that 
has been done to the people on the island of Nevis and uh, Baby Brandt and his party. With all of this nonsense that went on, I would have easily walk away from this whole situation. But knowing what I know, I will die trying to do my part to sensitize the people of Nevis at home and abroad and bring a change to the political but atmosphere assure, in Nevis. But I can assure you that the people of Nevis have not gone anywhere. Um, if you have an election tomorrow, um, in, 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 instead of it being 5-0, um, it might be 3-2 in favor of NRP. Um, again, the analysis that only eight, so next time she's going to lose, that does not stand up under uh, scrutiny. That's a, question I wanted, that's a question I wanted to ask you, uh, Mr. Parry. During your time as the Premier of Nevis, when NRP won their seat, in that constituency where Janice won, what was the average um, vote count there for NRP versus CCM? No, I don't know. I can't. I can't tell you. I know it, it has always been a marginal seat, winning by thirty-five, losing by thirty-five, etc., etc. Um, yeah. Then suddenly, then suddenly, the electorally started to swell. Okay. The reason I ask you that question, sir. Before you go on in Nevis, we have a, a, an interesting phenomenon. You know, election this swell, and you want <laughs> to know where the people are coming from. <laughs> um, when you look at the electoral list in Nevis right now, it's far bigger than the, the number of persons who can vote. Now, somebody quickly say, oh, but Nevisians live abroad, they live in England, they live in Canada, they live in the US, they live in the Virgin Islands, etc. Ah, uh -uh, it's more than that. Yeah. Something is going on there that is very sinister. Why I ask that question is because do I point out clear that um, she won by eight votes, but I want to believe that she had to make up a difference a hundred and something, a hundred and something. Of the deficit before she got yeah, to that. A hundred and something. All right. A hundred and something. So, so, so Dwyer is being, um, what, what word I want to use? Um, deceitful, <laughs> if, 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 if I must use that word. And well, trying to deceive the people that she only won by eight votes. She won by almost 200, if not more votes, because she had to make up a deficit before she got to that point? Yeah, she turned that constituency around and nobody can take that from her. And anybody who is wise and who is interested in politics should be able to read that situation, read it and realize what happened there. And not conclude because you only ate what could happen next time. It, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Constituencies are not that easily turned back. Once you, people begin to move in a particular direction and they continue so for a time, then it comes to a um, stalemate, and then the situation is reversed. And you know, I I have not, I don't have the facts, but if I'm not mistaken, in constituency number one in St. Kitts, during the days with Ian Patches Liber and um, Asim Martin, I think there was a difference of somebody won by four votes or eight votes or something in that constituency. So, yes, yes. Um, for Dwyer to come with this analysis now to try belittle. Sister Janice Daniel, I'm saying, do I done with your nonsense, man? You are my brother, you are my friend. You know, I respect you. Cut out the nonsense. You want to be a political pundit, you are a political pundit. You does a good job with your weekly commentary. Continue to do the good things, man, and stop trying to deceive the people. This is my advice to you, brother Dwyer. I'm going to drop the clip here by um, brother Wickham because I you know I have you on for some time. I know we are doing overtime and I appreciate you hanging and around. My battery, my battery is on the thread. <laughs> you know, you, you don't you don't have a you don't have a backup battery, you don't have a, a power no, pack. No, no, I am not very good at that. Okay. Um, well, I can say to you, brother uh, brother Parry, I, I I will be visiting the Federation in a couple of weeks uh -huh. and, and I'll be bringing a package for you because I want to know when I'm speaking to you again. Not only that you have proper lighting, but you got the power to, to, to take on, even if it's a four hour interview. So, <laughs> so expect, a, expect a contribution coming from DJ Marisha. Uh -huh. And I would hope that the folks online are here with me and if they can contribute a little sentiments to help me uh, buy this stuff, either uh -huh. way I'm gonna bring them. You don't have to wonder, I am bringing them with me. <laughs> okay, right? so thank but, you very much. Whether I get a donation or not, I'll be bringing a power pack for you and um, proper lighting and a holder for your device to ensure that when we speak again, there's no interruption in, in um, anything like that. And I really appreciate your honesty. But play, play, you, we can, play, play we can play, the, play um, tape, I think I still have a few. Okay, I'm, I'm, playing, I'm playing that now. 
Welcome back to The Narrative. I'm your storyteller, Calistra Farrier. In Nevis, the ne Nevis Reformation Party has officially expelled Cleon Stapleton Simmons from the party. She was suspended in February. The party has been at an impasse because Mrs. Stapleton had refused to endorse uh, the political leader of the uh, NRP, uh, Janice Daniel Hodge, as the opposition leader in the Nevis Island Assembly. She was suspended because of that and uh, the announcement uh, recently that she has been uh, expelled from the party. Joining me on the narrative now is Peter Wickham, regional political analyst, to talk about the uh, possible fallout for the NRP because of the impasse and uh, what's next for uh, Cleon Stapleton Simmons possibly uh, as she moves forward as an independent in the Nevis uh, House of Assembly. Welcome to the program, Peter. Thank you. Good with you. Good morning. Yeah. All right. Well, we had Miss uh, uh, Stapleton Simmons on our program and um, uh, yesterday to discuss, to give us her side of the situation. And uh, she, she said something. She gave the impression that uh, she really was not sticking to her guns on the issue of the the opposition leader, she didn't want to be the opposition leader, that uh, she just wanted to be able to have a say mm -hmm. in deciding who would be the senator. It really didn't matter who the senator was as long as she decided who it was. Um, did she make a mistake, do you believe, uh, by, by uh, taking the stance that she did in this matter? Mm -hmm. No, the, the interview yesterday with you was a little was very illuminating. Um, and the fact that it was stopped, you know, when it was it, it was clear that there's some waters that she is treading in which are, are increasingly deep. And I think clearly she was poorly advised and um, I think she continues so to be. Uh, and I think what we saw yesterday was an example of that. Um, I listened to the justifications and the analysis from her and stuff like that, but it, it doesn't it doesn't add up. My understanding is that in the same way that Premier Brantley does not consult with anyone in terms of who is in or out of his cabinet or whatever portfolios the persons hold, um, the, the leader of the opposition has one single um, act of patronage which it can exercise, and that is in respect of the leader of the opposition. Um, I don't see any document anywhere that says that the leader of the opposition needs to consult with anyone, and I don't believe that previous leaders of opposition have either. So, I mean, her argument that, you know, she had a, an inherent right to be consulted was something that I'm not, I'm struggling with. Um, and then she's saying, you know, look, she never didn't support the leader. What she did say was that she would support the leader on condition that this is the, the, the way that they go in terms of the senator. Um, conditional support to me doesn't cut it because conditional support is not consistent with the, the opposition, where well, the constitution of Nevis, which speaks specifically to the opposition leader identifying someone. It doesn't say in consultation with anyone in the same way that it doesn't say that anyone has to be consulted with for the premiership. So uh, long and short, I think that she's done herself a disturbance. I think she shot herself in the foot. What she has taken is a last stand politically uh, because she believes herself to have power now that she won't have uh, in, in the future. So um, let's see how it goes for her. But frankly, I, I'd repeat what I said before. And I think that politically, this is pretty much the end of the line for her. You know, another another uh, commentator was on my program also uh, this week and saying that he believes that it's going to have a severe impact on the NRP and that it's possible that it could have a severe impact on the NRP simply because she can uh, consolidate herself in the district and uh, be able to uh, try to get resources to her people by some sort of alliance with uh, the, 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 uh, the CCM and uh, be able mm -hmm. to, to either as an independent or, or with another political party, um, hold on to that seat and uh, that the NRP mm -hmm. could possibly not even have one seat given the slim margin that the leader of the NRP mm -hmm. won by in, in, in the last elections that they may find themselves even out of the assembly altogether. What do you make of that assessment? I mean, it's interesting. And, you know, um, bearing in mind what happened in Antigua and Barbuda with independent asset Michael, you know, uh, anything is possible. Frankly, I don't believe that she has the resources to be able to pull that off. And honestly, I don't know that it is necessarily in the CCM's um, interest to encourage her, you know, in that direction because, um, 
to, to me, what she has demonstrated is a certain amount of political naivety, uh, and I don't believe that that's going to be beneficial for the CCM either. So um, I don't believe she can uh, stimulate the level of resources needed to be able to pull the seat back. Um, the NRP is on an upward swing uh, based on the last election's results. You know, uh, they did quite well. And she, her seat is the strongest NRP seat. Now, the idea that the NRP could uh, be improving but they could hemorrhage in relation to her seat is something that I, I'm not, I, I'm struggling with. Um, I do feel that the national position in relation to her is the majority of NRP supporters are a bit upset that they have been denied the leadership of the opposition simply because of, of a, um, a stunt that she's pulled in this regard. And she seemed to, uh, in the interview with me, when I asked, you know, it, it appears as if what she wanted was to to stop the, the leader from becoming the opposition leader because she couldn't become the opposition leader. And she had been comfortable acting in that position for quite a while because she was the only person in the assembly. She was not the opposition leader mm -hmm. um, be because it was just her. There was mm -hmm. no one to support it. And uh, do, do you think that um, she understood that that, that was, was mm -hmm. not a very good strategy? I mean, yeah, no, I mean, when I, when I listened to her, in fairness to her, she, she didn't sound like a person who really wanted to be opposition leader, but what she thought was that she could use the possibility of her becoming opposition leader as a bargaining chip. So she's saying, I'm bargaining, and these are the things I have in my interest. One, I was opposition leader before, I'm more experienced politically than you, uh, I've been in parliament for longer, uh, and then secondly, I could determine who impacts on the senatorship. So she's negotiating and saying, okay, I'll surrender the, the right to be opposition leader if there is such a thing. Um, and then, but at least give me the, the senatorship. I, I think that she was negotiating badly and I think that she was advised badly because the, the, the leadership of the opposition was never necessarily within her gift because the reality is that it's two people. And as we now know, um, you can't get to be opposition leader unless both agree. And the likelihood of, of um, the uh, leader uh, agreeing for her is, is quite low. Uh, so to me, that needed to have been off the table. And then the other thing she was quote unquote negotiating on wasn't hers to negotiate away, which is that she wants a say in who should become senator. And she's saying that if it isn't her, her nominee, then maybe someone else, but she wants to say. Uh, and that's the part that I'm struggling with because if if it was that the, the leader of the NRP made the unusual decision of suggesting that that would be the case and she would next thing she would need to dictate you know what what happens as far as the formation of the cabinet is concerned if they ever get into power um again politically and ways is it a situation where she had become so accustomed to being the only one there with any kind of power as the, the lone the sole mm. member of the opposition that it might have been a bit hard to adjust now that mm. someone else was was playing the lead mm. role i mean and i would go even further than that you know you have an analogous situation going on in antigua and barbuda where um jamal pringle would have been the opposition leader in a situation where there was no one else no he is in a parliament with others and you know he he's facing a leadership battle because there's no automatic assumption that he will continue as opposition leader and, and party leader and i think that that is really the, the issue that that comes up um i think that what her position is that she was ignored and looked over for the leadership of the party when she was the only person in parliament um and she does believe that being the only person in parliament even if it is by way of a safe seat that she holds you know should essentially give her some some right to, to have some power or influence and she doesn't like the fact that she has none clearly um the reality however is that you know opposition politics is lonely and and, and invariably the only person in the opposition who has any power is the leader because the leader has the power to nominate a senator but outside of that there's not a lot of power that the opposition has that they can distribute but clearly she feels that being in parliament and having been in parliament as long as she was she, she has the right to be able to exercise power over something and my sense is that what she's done is that she's mashing up the party because ultimately she she has has been really basically persuaded that she doesn't really have this power that she believed that she would have had now dr janice hodge she wrote to the minister of finance asking that all of the courtesies and, and the privileges and resources that are available for an opposition, official opposition leader, be made available, be extended to her. Uh, Mark Brantley, the premier, responded by shutting down the office of the leader of the opposition um, mm -hmm. after that. 
Do you think that he made the right move? Yeah, I mean, Mark Bradley is playing good politics and, you know, he has shown himself to be a shrewd, a shrewd political player. And I think that under the circumstances, that was the right thing to do. Um, personally, I, I am of the opinion that the deputy governor or the governor can identify an uh, opposition leader. Um, we've already established that that's not going to happen and it's inconsistent with her own opinion and the opinion of others in, 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 in Nevis. So I stand corrected on that one. And as much as that is the case, um, I think that Premier Brantley is on very good ground to say to them, look, no, you know, if, if there was never a situation before where there was one and there was one person and there needs to be an agreement between two for them to be somebody, no, then I have the right to determine whether I will or I won't. And in the past, he would have made those offices available to um, the um, Stapleton Simmons. Um, because she was the only person there, even though she was not identified as the person for the office. Uh, so on this occasion, I think that he is well advised to say, look, you know, um, I will let the politics that you guys are playing, um, you know, display itself in terms of this mess. And I, and I will let you guys understand the fact that you're really losing out on something based on the fact that you're not able to come together and decide among yourselves. So I think he's playing good politics. Uh, Dr. Hodge also, you know, uh, by making the request, it seems entirely reasonable that she should be entitled to those resources. But uh, again, you know, Premier Bradley is, is on good ground to say, sorry, you know, I, I disagree. Should the leadership of Dr. Hodge be in question this time, given that she was not able to manage the situation better? Could she have managed the situation better? Was there any path to a, a, a settlement of this, of this problem where she could have preserved her party the, the, the way it was, with Ms. Simmons, Ms. Ms. Simmons in, and a leader of the opposition chosen? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are lots of people who would say that. Um, generally speaking, you have these conversations taking place within parties where people say, look, yes, we should be able to sit down and, and negotiate and come to conclusions. And it's a reflection of, of weakness on her part that she has not been able to, to do that. Um, I beg to differ because, you know, we never hear this conversation with regard to premiers and prime ministers and presidents. But we hear this conversation with regard to opposition leaders which is the assumption that opposition leaders have a greater responsibility to negotiate than, than those in, in, in positions of power. Um, so I'm sure that there are people in the NRP that are saying that, but I also feel that the overwhelming majority of people in the NRP also understand that the nature of politics in Nevis um, at the national and also the local level is that you know the, the leader has certain rights and obligations that has to demonstrate certain levels of strength. I mean, uh, Premier Bradley didn't become Premier by being weak. And I think that what she has to demonstrate also is certain strength in this regard, because if it is that uh, any member can dictate within the, the, the unit what happens, uh, as I said, she'll be asking for trouble if they ever get into government. So I think that the majority will, will support her. Uh, but I do feel that, yes, there are people in there that are asking questions as, as they're asking questions of Dr. Harris on the other side. And, you know, they will ask questions of any opposition leader in a situation where he doesn't seem to be able to bring unity. And now on the BVI situation, I wanted to talk to you a bit about that. Right. The, defec the defection <laughs> of, of Lorna Smith, um, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. surprising catching the NDP and the rest of the opposition with their pants down, really, um, and uh, helping Natalia Whitley to uh, form the government and become the premier. Mm -hmm. um, your take on that? She's gotten some licks from, yeah, I, from I was, her colleagues on it. Yeah, so now um, that interview turned into the Tartola um, interview. So I have no interest in that during this period. We are focusing on Nevis and the NRP. So, but uh, Harry, um, any comments in that regard with brother? Uh, I heard. I would say that um, the, analysis, the analysis by Peter Wickham was quite good. And um, um, that is what informed me more than any other person, really, that, uh, you know, she made some mistakes. She was badly advised and she went about it the wrong way. I, I, I think I said earlier, and I would say again, that um, if I had pursued that path that she pursued, I would have known when to stop. I would have said, well, um, the leader obviously doesn't want to share the power with me. So um, let her go ahead. And nominate whoever she wants to nominate, and we will work together. 
And of course, I will focus on my constituency until such time as I feel the need to move towards leadership again. Basically, um, um, she made some mistakes. Um, she made some mistakes. She was badly advised. And um, it was a power play. Uh, we have to accept that. And we can pretend any way we want to pretend, but that's what it was, you know? So um, I don't think that um, the, the interview itself needs any serious analysis or explanation. It was quite clear. All right. I think she was um, used by baby Brantley. She fell for his divisiveness. She thought he was in her corner and definitely he was not. He was just um, trying to um, show uh, um, a, a, a speed bump in the road for the NRP. Wait, let, 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 let me say, could I say this, that um, if she were advised by the CCM leader, the leader of CCM and the government, then certainly she was immediately disqualified to be ever leader of NRP. All right. I don't, I don't know of any NRP leader who seeks advice from the opposition. I don't know anybody who is serious about leadership and serious about politics would go to the, the other side for, to be advised. Um, um, what kind of advice they'll give you? They, their role is to diminish you, to diminish your party and even to destroy your party. And I can't be angry with Mark Brantley for doing whatever he did if he gave if the opportunity was given to him. It was given to him. And you know, um, Brother Perry, what I can say this loud is that I get into some discussion and debates. And my good friend dear brother Ivor Henry could confirm my conversation because he was on the phone with an individual that I have known for some years and I thought they had more sense. Maybe that person fit into the category that Ian Patches Lambert spoke about, not having common sense or failed the common sense test. Because when I challenged that individual about why would Cleon be going to Baby Bentley for advisor having conversation when he put someone to run against her in the election and spent, I understand, millions, thousands if not millions of dollars to win a seat against her, even though that person failed. Why would you be going to that person for advice? And this person gonna say to me, only twice she went to him. But I say, <laughs> if, even if it's once, Brother Perry, once is too much. Yeah, well, if there is an admission, if there's yeah. an admission, it um it defeats the purpose. And this is one of our, this is one of our people. This is one of our supporters. Yeah, yeah well, if, if if that supporter is saying she went twice, that that the supporter is condemning her, and virtually saying she is not fit to be leader of NRP. Um, maybe she should join this. Yeah, I, I I I again I don't want to judge her. I don't I have no proof that she did. I'm just supposing. I'm saying that. If I was aware that this happened, I would have a serious problem in terms of my opinion of her or anybody else who does that. Brother Parry, I would assume that you don't listen to Andy Mark or his press conferences. Because, no, I don't. I don't. because I don't. he said that publicly, that she but comes to him for advice. Sometimes you can't trust what he says, you know. <laughs> that is true, but he bragged about it and it was confirmed. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> okay. And, and, and another thing where I believe a lot of things that was said, that she said was said. I want to know, this lady that did the interview with Mr. Wickham and Cleone and Dwyer, she spoke about the internal polling of the candidates. How would she get that information unless somebody tell her about the in, in, internal polling? How would Dwyer That's get that information? if somebody did not speak to them about the internal polling? Well, that, that's, a, that's a question, um, Marisha. And I raised a similar question earlier when we were talking about Doyle's interview. How, how did he get certain information? Who gave him? Who gave him? Because um, some of that information, whether uh, the information is accurate or inaccurate, um, he could only know because somebody who was inside NRP told him. Unless baby Bradley told him. Well, he's not inside an office so, uh, unless somebody told him. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to jump into the to final clips I want to deal with you before your phone battery dead. And by the way, my brethren here, one of my technicians, Brother Elvan Ellie, he said, Marisha, let Mr. Parry know. I will donate his phone, the tripod for his phone. I'll send it to your address before you leave. So 
I already getting some good results. Uh, we're gonna right. take it. We're gonna take care of you. Okay. Right? So right. you you can put your phone by the side of your bed and have your conversation and the body messing with you and you could have you uh, whatever you're doing at the same time, right? So we're right. we, we gonna we're we gonna take care of you. Now I'm gonna move on to this clip with groundings. Um, very short clips because I know that you and the Labour administration, Sam Kanda and Dr. Douglas and folks, has have a good relationship. And there are some things that have been said out there that, like I said, I personally work with these guys during the Get Rid of Them campaign. And I know some of them said they do not know enough about Nevis politics to speak on it, but they're speaking a lot now. Some of them said that if everyone in Nevis is a secession, they don't want to have nothing to say about it, but they're speaking to regional people. So if you're speaking to regional people, come on, DJ Marisha, let's have the conversation. Let's have a face off, respect each other. Don't tell me how my ass when I, when, I, when I ask the hard question and don't ask to take a pause. Let's have a one-on-one, -on -one. Let's, speak, let's speak openly. And I look forward to that opportunity with Dwyer Stefan and Sam Kanda and Dr. Martin. They need to come here, let's have an open one-on-one -on -one because they mislead me. They have more interest in Nevis and they, they know more about the politics in Nevis than they um, try to um, <laughs> deliver. So I, I put that to them, that they know more. And my big, my boy, the big, big jail, I am challenging him as well. You need to be more open with what's going on in Nevis. You know, bring, bring the real news. I offer you to um, get to join us across to Nevis. We'll pay the tab. My boy, uh, brother Prince Mills of the Caribs Express, will will take them across to Nevis. My boy Carbo and Jetty Taylor and whoever over there, my boy Mikey Slack will pick up the lunch, will pay for their lunch just to do their little interview and come back and give a good report on your um, grounding program or your news item. I guarantee you the big JL that once you do this little job to go across to Nevis and get to the bottom of the wrongs that are taking place over there, Freedom FM will blow up with support your ratings will fly high. So I'm challenging you, the big JL, to go across to Nevis. Stand by for the groundings chatter with um, the big JL, Dr. Martin and Sam Kanda. The NRP formally expelled mm -hmm. the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons from its fold mm -hmm. by way of a release earlier this week. And um, subsequent to that, uh, she appeared on an interview yes. with uh, Christopher Farrier, is the name? Yes. Of, of, so what's the name of the program again? Uh, narrative. The narrative. The narrative. Yeah. And that interview um, in, in itself uh, created quite a stir because it appears as though uh, uh, the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons was not having a particularly good time with um, with some of the she questions. Didn't enjoy it at all. And, uh, and asked to be relieved. She stopped the interview. She's not uh, feeling comfortable. That was, that was so, the case. So, so th th that is a discussion item. Um, uh, Sam and Juni, if you are aspiring to political office, you must know. Well, Sam is here. He can tell uh, us how hot the kitchen is. Let's just take a piece of that interview now. The, uh, the discussions with you and Dr. Hodge were amicable, that you, you, you appear to have been making some headway, and then the discussion stalled. Why do you say yes. it was amicable? What, what, was she willing to uh, consider uh, your candidate whom, uh, if I understand it correctly, was the same gentleman who um, internal polling indicated was the better candidate for District 1? Um, I, I would not say that she agreed that he should be the nominated senator. As a matter of fact, the both persons who we, um, we were proposing, we could not agree. And so on January 29th, we had a, a mediation, thanks to a very kind um, gentleman. I am not going to disclose his name without his permission, but he did approach both of us to see whether we can have some amicable discussions in the form of a mediation with both of us having mediators in order to assist us in, in arriving at a, a, a amicable you know, solution to the impasse. Um, I must say that from my experience, um, not even no one from the executive, not the chairman of the party, no one really um, used the, the opportunity to 
sit both elected members um, down and have a discussion at the right. end so of the is, day. This is one of the major question. bones of contention about the appointing the um, senator, the senator yeah. and the opposition leader. Let's advance this a little bit and listen to this bit. A suggestion. And I indicated from the onset that if it is that um, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge would, would like to be the leader, then she would have my full support, provided that I have a say as to who the, the senator is. And yes, for me, um, even today, I do not see anything wrong with that approach because we, we are in a democracy, okay? People can negotiate, people can bargain. If someone needs something from you and the support was needed from me and I was fully aware of that, then we can have a discussion and we can engage in the best interests of the party, in the best interests of the people who I represented. Now, right after this, things got a little bit warm. Uh, so we're going to bring you up to speed with that. I stated um, that I would like to Mr. Bartlett to be the senator. When uh, there was um, some backlash from that, I said, OK, if you, I do not believe in making anybody uncomfortable in parliament. So therefore, let us look at other persons. So I do not believe that this was a power play or anything like that. I believe I understood. So if, well, if you were not, Sorry. if you if you were not convinced, and this wasn't a matter of conviction that Mr. Bartlett was the best choice for the people of Nevis in a senatorial position, then you were simply trying to stop her from being opposition leader. I I do not agree with that. Um. Can we, no, can we no, 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 now you are, let, let's move on to, you're in, you're independent now, and uh, there's been a lot of speculation about whether or not you would uh, form an, a, an, an alliance with the, with the CCM. Okay, Calestra, can we take a pause here? Okay. Um, um, please. You, okay, you need some, okay, you want to end no, the interview or you want to pause? Know. No, I need to pause because I feel that the interview is becoming very combative and I, I was not prepared for this and I do not want this image of me to be out there. Um, All right, so I'm going to end it right there with that um, interview. She got flustered at the end at the line of questioning, which she described as becoming combative very and arguing very back and forth. Guys, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? To me, I, I, I think that... Um, it's difficult for me to see how, um, given all the circumstances, her political career taking off from this. You know, it, I think it will go in the other direction. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I was surprised to hear that she was not prepared for this. Mm -hmm. um, given the consequences, the circumstances, sorry, given the circumstances, the bones, the bone, the primary bone of contention and other bones. Mm. The discussion in Nevis, St. Kitts and Nevis, and, tr and throughout the region, um, an aspiring, a politician, an aspiring government person, you have to be prepared for this. Mm. Mm. And she said no. Mm. The end. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it was, a, in my view, a sad day for, for politics in Nevis. Mm. Um, and to the attitude I saw this coming, I don't think that this was handled badly. This was handled very badly. Uh, the NRP general, but uh, uh, Cleon Simmons in, in, in particular, I, uh, I, I thought that uh, the, the, over the last two or three years, uh, NRP was in the ascendancy. They were coming back. I mean, they've they, they been out of office uh, federally for a long time, right. and, 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 and locally as well. And, and so uh, in the last couple of years, I saw them uh, coming back to some form of you know, representation and some respectability. And we thought that the, you know, the, the, the elections, the federal elections this year, because we had the federal election before. Mm -hmm. the, we had the, the News yeah. Island election before. No, the other no, no, the federal election before, yeah. and um, they, they were making a, a, a bid for that. And I, I thought they, they could have handled it, the federal elections a lot better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was surprised of the, of the strategy, 
he, he, had, he had a strategy where uh, people were, were looking for alliances, right? Uh, the PAM uh, and CCM, PAM and, PAM and CCM. They, they're early. Uh, PAM was saying that, uh, um, I mean, CCM was saying, all you have to do, or telling PAM, all you have to do is to win three sinkets, and we have it covered, right? And so PLP, nobody was, was, was willing to align with, with, uh, with PLP. And, but, but the Labour Party was the only party who had an opportunity to win the elections without any support of anybody else. But the Labour Party was reaching out to, to NRP to say, look, let's see if we could have some alliances, something and so on. And that was flatly rejected. That, for me, was the first surprise. Because I believe if they had made an effort to align, to, to have some a relationship, that would have increased the chances at the local election. Now, speaking about the NRP, do you see a scenario emerging within the next five years where the Honorable Cleon Simmons, mm -hmm. Stapleton Simmons, mm -hmm. would, as it were, that's a strong NRP seat that yeah, she's yeah, in, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, number yeah, one. Yeah. Is a strong NRP yeah. seat. Mm -hmm. Do you see? No, five. Five. Is, is five. It's, it's she's five. five? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Five. five. Mm -hmm. Saint Thomas's. Saint Thomas's. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you see her being able to maintain? I doubt that. No. I doubt that very much. A, I doubt that. I doubt that's that. That's a party seat. Yeah. That's a party seat. I doubt that very much. I doubt that very much. So what happens to her political career? It's finished. The end. It's over. I see. Well, in my view. Yeah, yeah. In my view, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think that's finished. I, 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 Sam, maybe I'm a little, a little bit different to you. I, I thought the NRP um, structure bent over backwards. To? To help her? Um, the winds were in the NRP sale. Exactly. And nothing mm -hmm. should stop those winds. Uh -huh. What do you mean? In, like... like like in a, a the leader, the, the leadership, the leadership um, contest. Uh -huh. This was a, this was a power struggle. Yeah, right. Yeah, I understand. This that. was a power struggle. I understand that. And um, power struggles cannot be countenanced when you are in the ascendancy. Mm -hmm. they, they retard. Mm -hmm. They yeah. retard your progress. Absolutely. Um, what if she's able to, in her last, in her, the, this session of, you know, her her reign, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, would she join up with the CCM? in order to get um, something for her constituents. Um, because she's an independent now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So she could form an alliance with... Yeah, she could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she could. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but CCM but, will be doing their polling. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah, yeah. see CCM using her oh, as a candidate? Subject to polling. Subject to polling. Is she asset? Mm -hmm. Is she liability? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. A CCM, all, well, that's uh, St. Thomas's area, they already have somebody there mm -hmm. uh, who's the deputy speaker in the Federal Assembly. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remind me of a name. Oh, gosh, uh, I'm missing it. Oh. Right. Stapleton? Right. So, no, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. Oh. Stapleton is clear. Yeah. Right. Bartlett, no, not Bartlett. Oh. Bartlett is in. in anyway, the, yeah. somebody's going to send us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so yeah. Th there seems to be some denial of whether this was a. Post. Objection, objection to the term power struggle. Mm -hmm. As I see it, uh, Janice Daniel Hodge, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, was duly elected mm -hmm. as, as the party leader. Party party leader. leader. Mm -hmm. So once the hammer came down on that, mm -hmm. everybody else is falling in line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want to challenge, you challenge on the next time, the next season. Ne next time you have a party conference. But, but once the hammer came down, and it's kumbaya, we want one party. Okay. And that didn't happen. Right. And I thought NRP was very, very um, tolerant yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. I could imagine in the days of Ivor Stevens and Bamin Swanston and, and the likes, <laughs> this would have been nipped in the bud yeah. early yeah. o'clock. What's next? We almost. Um, yeah, Brother Parry, um, open your mic there. Mic is closed. Um, your comments on this particular clips from the Ground in Coup. Um, you, you can hear me? I can hear you now. Remember, yes, I said, okay. remember, remember I said earlier that Sam Kanda said he did not know enough about the Navy's politics to comment. You know, <laughs> but according to Sam Kanda there, he's talking about NRP situation in the last two to three years. 
this question I was asking Sam was in 2022, you know, during okay. the election campaign. So if he did not know enough about Navy's politics in 2022, well, how he knows so much in the last two to three years about NRP? Well, he did say that uh, um, Labour approached NRP and uh, they were flatly turned up. I, do, I don't really know if um, it should be put so strongly. What, what the leader party leader said is that she was not going to link up with anybody until the election was over and whoever was in government, that's who she'd want to work with. Um, I, I, you know, there are two sides there. Um, somebody else could have said, well, or she could have said, well, yeah, we will work with you. Um, she was new to the whole thing and she, maybe she did not know how the people of Nevis will, will receive that type of relationship because uh, when I did it, I was criticized by certain portions of the people of Nevis. So there are all kind of issues there. I'm not going to hold her, uh, hold her feet to the fire for that. Um, that's gone, that's over. And I believe that we of the NRP have to paddle our own canoe and get to the point where we want to get. And when we have a safe landing, we can talk. Um, in terms of Sam, I, I wouldn't say he said anything that was too dangerous, you know. I mean, he, not yet. Um, not, yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not no. yet. Not <laughs> yet. I mean, he was analyzing. <laughs> he was, he was analyzing. Trust me. He was analyzing the situation, but I'm pleased that they realized that the St. Thomas's seat is not a seat to be taken lightly. Um, that um, anybody can just walk in St. Thomas and, and, and move away with it. You know, it's not going to happen. I can assure you of that. Well, I'm, I'm going to drop a final clip with, with those guys on groundings. I'm and, running out uh, of 10 percent now. Um, well, I, I'm giving you five, six, actually six minutes, then you can do your closing and cut off because you've been here for a while. And you got to blame Ivor Henry for this. Eh? He's the one that had me an overtime. Because I could have I, I could have cut this thing at, at eight o'clock and gone, but and I'm gonna hear his cussing in the morning. I don't need to hear it. So I said, let me just take care of this and then kill the program. So yes, just stand by. I taught him at school. He, he's listening to you. Um but 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 I have a um and every Paris said good night. Um a political party exists to form a government. That's right. Numbers. <laughs> so NRP exists to form a government, whether local or federal or both. And so you do everything in your power Absolutely. to form the government, Absolutely. including alliances. Alliances. <laughs> uh, in a democracy, you know, Sam Condor, um, Jr., he likes to say this, in a democracy, all ideas contend. Well, all speculation contends. Too, right mm -hmm. yeah okay we would live in a democracy mm -hmm. but how to separate mm -hmm. you know how to separate the speculation from the truth mm -hmm. uh, in the, in, I don't know I don't have all the answers but I think in the final analysis political parties have to get uh, maximumly serious about candidate selection uh, there's some there's been some some progress to that to that end and, and the candidates must pass the Martin Luther King test, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the quotation from Martin Luther King, the ultimate measure of a man or a woman is how is where he or she stands in moment is not. Sorry, let's start over. The ultimate measure is not where they stand in moments of convenience and comfort but where they stand in times of challenges and controversy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. candidates have to go through a ringer, mm -hmm. a test mm -hmm. of physical and mental fortitude before they become, um, before they become, um, they, they gain our confidence. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, I am so pleased, Juni, and to be part of this grounding program that we have. I see that this is really an education for our people mm -hmm. and we have to uh, continue to do this. You know, I want to encourage people to, uh, to um, express their views, but with the reservation that 
you don't have all the facts and you don't understand everything and you could be wrong. I mean, this afternoon is a clear testimony to that. I, I, I really was really, <laughs> these people are speaking as if they're speaking with authority on matters which they don't understand anything about. <laughs> but, but, but this is the, the whole purpose of the program, to get people to understand. Um, because in terms of me, Sam Kondo, there's nobody could doubt that I am a true and absolute believer in the ethos and the philosophy of the Labour Party, which when you think about it, is the ethos of all great religion, compassion for all, fairness, and justice for all, extending a helping hand. And that is my philosophy, that's what I believe. And that's what I do at all times. That is my politics. Mm -hmm. And so, that is what I offer to the people at all times. And I associate with the party or any group who believe in that totally and absolutely. And so that is what it's about. And so I am saying that politics is about winning a government. That, that's what political parties exist for, to win the government. And you do that by alliances and, you know, collaborating and um, getting support from wherever it is you could get support from. If you're not doing that, you're really wasting your time as a political party. And that is what I'm saying, that, 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 that we expected the people of the NRP to do during the federal elections, to look for, but everybody is looking for alliances. The, 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 the NRP has contesting three seats in a federal election. I mean, if you don't uh, align with somebody, how you how you going to be a part of any government? You, you can't wait until the elections are over to see what's going to happen. The, 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 you're contesting election to form the government. And that's why I believe the NRP made a mistake in that they weren't trying to create alliances to work. To, uh, to, and I'm saying that if they had done that, they would have done much better in the NIA elections. All right. That is the only point I'm making. That's the only point. Yep. Yeah, so Brother Parry, mm -hmm. listening, listening to your friend Sam Kanda, I guess they're justifying their attitude towards the NRP for not taking a side during the federal election. What I'm trying to graps from some and those pundits out there for the labor administration our labor supporters so baby Bentley team up with um the people's action movements and they had all kind of nasty things to say about everybody else because they cost from labor to nrp to plp the only two parties in their view was good for St. Kitts Nevis to form a government was between Pam and the CCM. That was their campaign. I listened to their campaign, like I said, over and over and over. But according to Sam, he could he could forgive Mark Brantley. He could forgive Baby Brantley for all the damage, the damaging things that was said and was was done during the campaign. But there's no forgiveness. Uh, there is no understanding for the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge to say that we will let the people of St. Kitts decide who should form the government and whoever formed that government will support them. By the way, I oppose that position. But at the end of the day, I understand. I understand the nature now of the politics in Nevis. I remember Mark Brantley made a statement 
that we don't understand in Navy's politics. Well, I had a crash course for just under 12 months, and I understand the, the politics of Navis. He also said, nobody know me in Navis. But I'm pretty sure if you go online, you would see the whole of Navis log on. Well, I noticed that. I noticed the whole of Navis following your program. <laughs> and I've seen you in Navis. We met by accident um, uh, at Cabo's Bar. Yes. And, and everybody knows you, so I, I'm not worried about that part. So, um, I, I, would, I would say that um, the, 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 the dynamic that was taking place at the time, I am, Sam would not know. Um, the, Janice didn't even want to run in the federal government because she wanted to focus on Nevis. And uh, I am one of those, one of the few persons who told her she had to run. Um, I think I spoke to her a few times until she had to contest. And um, I wanted her to contest because um, I think she needed to get her feet wet. Um, I felt she was the best person who could win St. Thomas's and, uh, and St. James because she had done work in St. James and made people in St. Thomas's a supporter. Um, I, I, um, I think the election uh, unfortunately caught um, NRP off guard because they were focusing on campaigning for the local election. All right. and, they, and they suddenly had to switch to the federal election. And so uh, I don't think Sam and they fully understand the dynamic that, that was at work there and the maybe lack of prepared, preparedness for the, for the federal election, the preparedness in terms of candidates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think Janice was very re re relieved when the federal government election was over so she could focus on the Nevis election because that is exactly what she wanted to focus on. And maybe uh, as somebody living in St. Kitts, they have not yet grasped that in Nevis, the Nevis local election tend to take priority over the federal election. That is something that escapes people. And basically what happens when, um, and, and you have the example of um, the unity government, people were complaining that the, the three guys were down there as ministers neglecting Nevis. They were complaining that, um, they, they, nobody was taking them on in sync if they were only getting paid two salaries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the NRP historically has had the position that we are going to focus on the Nevis government and we're going to advance go, um, government and development through the Nevis Island administration. After all, in 1983, NRP was the party that brought the government to Nevis. And we, 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 we have that commitment to the government and the commitment to using the government as an instrument for development in Nevis, working with the, 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 the federal people in Sinkis. And I have a feeling that that has not sunk in with some people yet. Uh, maybe, 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 I don't know, maybe we, um, as we go along, we need to have a constitutional change. Um, that, that is something that people talk about. Um, but the way the, constitu the way the constitution is organized now, focus, on Nevis comes first to the people of Nevis. More Nevisians vote in the local election than in the federal election, you know. I realize a lot that. Of, a lot of people don't realize that. I realize that, yeah. To my stuff. Well, Brother Parry, um, I want to thank you for taking the time out and even going over time with me. And I think the next time you make it back here, we'll be talking about more progressive and protect, pr productive thing for, um, for Nevis and the people of Nevis. Because I think with where we are now, there's gonna be a convention on the 21st for the NRP. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that convention, we should have a better understanding of where the position of NRP is at. And um, I look forward to that opportunity. As I said earlier, we are coming down to St. Kitts Nevis next month. The Jamarisha Sports Club will be touring St. Kitts Nevis. And I'm happy that our first stop will be in Deep Bay and the 17th at the um, fishing tournament there. And on Sunday the 18th, we'll be coming across to Carbos and Nevis where the NRP under the leadership of Sister Janice Daniel Hatch will be hosting us for the Father's Day event. We have a great amount of people will be coming with us. It's an open invitation to folks who wants to join us. I'm inviting everyone to come to Carbos. People are talking about the Prime Minister have not been to Nevis to mingle. I also publicly giving him an invitation and his cabinet, and I'm going to give him a private invitation. 
So it's a great possibility that we may see the prime minister and maybe his cabinet or a few people from his cabinet who will join us on the 18th of June over there at Carbos. Carbos places where? Fountain? Fountain, yes, Fountain. In Fountain. So we look forward to hanging out over there, playing some dominoes, meet and greet and having a good time, eating some good goat water and some um, good steamed fish and uh, banana. Looking forward to the mangoes <laughs> and the, the local treats. Whatever okay. local, whatever locals we're looking forward to that, um, brother, okay. uh, brother Parry. I know folks gonna want to jump on me, and let me say it to you now before they kill me. Next week I cannot do a program because I am the corresponding secretary of the New York Cricket League, which been going okay. through a rough period, and their meetings are on the second Wednesday of the month, which should have been tonight, and I could not make it so. Um, I asked them to postpone it to next week so that I can accommodate the meeting. Okay. So I, I will take a break next Wednesday. I'll be back on the 24th in full blast. So again, if there's anything that come up, um, I would love to for you to come and entertain the folks and give you an update. But other than that, there's a lot that is going on here in the diaspora for St. Kitts Nevis as well. And mm -hmm. before the program finished tonight, I'll give some updates on some of the happenings. But I know your phone is running and dead, uh, dying. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the opportunity to do your closing, sir. Okay. Well, I, I just want to say that I want it to be known by all that the only party that I have ever supported is the Nevis Reformation Party. And I continue to be a strong supporter of the party. The party has, um, as its core values, Nevis first party second, and yourself last. That you should, you should um, work towards the development of the country, provide jobs for all, provide development for all, and to make Nevis a better place, peace, progress, and prosperity. Many people have sacrificed um, for this. We speak of Daniel and we speak of Stevens and Swanston. They are names, but there are many unknown names who believe in the philosophy of the Nevis Reformation Party. And Sam quoted what the Labour Party stands for. Surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, it's the same thing that the Nevis Reformation Party stands for. Upliftment of the people of Nevis. Take them out of poverty, give them a chance to realize their full potential. Serve all the people all the time. So thank you very much for having me. And I want us to remember Nevis first, the Nevis Reformation Party. Well, it's good to hear you say that, Mr. Parry, because in um, one of um, Cleone's interview, I heard her say herself first, and then it, she went down the line to the, the people and the country and whatever. But you always have to put um, the country first. And I look forward to continue. I give up myself to uplift the communities and sensitize the community because if I was thinking about myself, Brother Parry, I would not be sitting here tonight talking to you because I went to sleep last night feeling well. I got up this morning with my foot hot in me. I guess I walked too much, I walked too much yesterday. Okay. And if I were to follow my feeling, I'll be in the bed with my foot cock up. But I know, I know how important it is to come here to the people and to allow you the opportunity to come and speak to the people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to just give some quick updates. If you want to stay online, you can listen offline or online. It's up to you. But I got to um, drop some information, and I have to play Brother Dwyer's commentary because um, Dwyer had a very powerful commentary for today. And I want people to understand, in spite of how you may feel about his position towards Nevis and the political parties and Nevis, his commentaries are very informative, and I encourage people to listen to them. Well, I listen to him all the time. I listen today, and um, he was very incisive, very incisive. And um, I, I wish he can always be like that, especially when it comes to Nevis and then happy. Correct. That is, that is all good. I'm asking for. Just be yes. consistent. Be consistent and be good. Yes. yes. Well, no, I, my, my, I have to charge my phone. So have a very good night and a pleasant, a pleasant night to all those who follow this program. Thank you very much for listening. All right, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so... Um, the upcoming event um, for the Nevision for Nevis Foundation here in the Boogie Down Bronx 
is going to be taking place on the 17th of June, Saturday, 17th June, at the St. Andrew's um, Church there at 781 Castle Hill Avenue, Bronx, New York, 10473. It starts at 8 a.m. Support the Division for Navis event. That's on the 17th of June over there at Castle Hill Avenue. And let me give you just some quick information that if you're seeking for tickets and you do not know where to get your tickets, you can reach out to um, Hazel Claxton. Her number is 917-569-1842. That's 917-569-1842. You could also reach out to Twilla at 718-938-5911. That's Twilla at 718-938-5911. You could also reach Brother Gene Sider at 917-939-9943. That's Gene Sider at 917-939-9943. Brother Felix, his number is 917-498-1022. Felix, 917-498-1022. You could also reach Werner at 917-655-9712. That's Verna, 917-655-9712. And Birdman, 646-334-3167. That's 646-334-3137. I'm gonna put this information in the chat as well this evening so that if anyone missed the numbers and they want to get in touch with these folks, you can just go back to the link and um, you can um, get the numbers there. Don't forget, um, DJ Mauritius Sports Club will be heading down to the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis on the um, 17th of June to the 1st of July. We will be hosted by the Police Sports Club, the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Sports Club, as well as the St. Kitts Cricket Association. Um, there is uh, a couple of people that had some incidents that cannot um, make it with us on the trip, about two or three seats, I think. Um, there are reasonable seats, first come, first serve. Anyone wishing to join us on that trip, feel free to reach out to me at 917-597-0195. That's 917-597-0195. Uh, also, the Jamarisha Sports Club bus ride that is coming up on the 29th of July to Foxwood Shopping and Casino. Remember, the tickets are going fast. Secure your tickets if you plan to hang with us on the 29th of um, July. Just reach out to me at 917-597-0195. Also, Carbos, I don't know if Carbo put his information in the chat as yet, but Brother Carbo, I would like you to drop your place in the chat and um, let the folks know where to find Carbo. Now, for those of you in the Federation or traveling to the Federation and uh, want to join us on the trip on the 18th across to Nevis, we know that the ferries stop running at a certain time. So I, I have made arrangements for us to get a charter ferry to bring us across. So we're going to leave Nevis when we want. We're not going to leave Nevis because they throw us out. We're going to leave Nevis when we want. So for those folks who are interested in joining us going across to Nevis, you can get across on your own because there are ferries that run all day. Is the coming back you might be concerned about. So I would advise you, if you plan to join us, you can send me a WhatsApp message to 917-597-0195. That's my US line or uh, my local sync, it's number is 869-660-0195. That's 869-660-0195. And yes, you folks online, I will invite Dr. Joe, Prime Minister Joe, to this event. And I know if he's available, he'll be happy to join us and any members of his cabinet. Um, it's gonna be a lovely day, it's Father's Day. And I want to thank Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, the NRP and Brother Carbo for extending the opportunity to host us and Nevis on the 18th of June. It's gonna be nice. 
And um, once we finalize how many people are joining us, then I will be able to let you know which ferry service we are using because you know, I have a lot of friends down there with ferries. We have the Apple Cider, we have the Caribbean Express with our brother Prince Mills, who is always supportive and accommodating me across the Navis. So, you know, I believe in supporting businesses that support us. So I'll be following up and giving you folks the information as we go along. Again, like I said earlier, um, next Wednesday, I have to take a break to attend a very important meeting with the Cricket League here in the Bronx. So I won't be back until the 24th of May. I'm giving you guys a chance to take a break and uh, pay attention to what's going on. Ease up on the cussing, ease up on the politics, you know. So right about now, I'm going to drop the commentary for Brother Dwyer Astafan for today. May 10th, very interesting commentary. So take a listen and I'll be back shortly. Greetings. Today we discuss two matters. The first matter is about a man named Charles Mountbatten Windsor, also known as King Charles III, King of England, Scotland, Wales, Jamaica, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, St. Kitts and Nevis, and other places. And the second matter is about housing for the people of our country. Discussing the first matter will be brief. Our Prime Minister has declared that we will have the opportunity to cut constitutional ties with the British monarchy. Let's do this as quickly as possible. A referendum will be required. And to be practical, let us consider other constitutional changes which you might want to make and let us have a referendum on all of those matters. Yes, it would be good to at last have a working and equitable relationship with the British. I say at last because the relationship has never been equitable. This is because they held the big stick then and they hold the big stick still. Indeed, the colonial setup of the past has not really changed in the world. The countries of the North, together with Russia, China, and emerging India, hold much of the sway with regard to the way in which the affairs of former colonies and conquered lands are conducted. And we in the former colonies are as much to blame for this as they are, because the hard work of removing ourselves from under the yoke, the necessary work of forming alliances among ourselves so that our voices and collective power can be heard and felt globally is our work to do, not theirs. We remain divided and weak. So when they crack their whips and tell us to change our laws, to tighten up on this and tighten up on that, while London, Amsterdam, Paris, New York and others remain the top money laundering centers of the world. When we as peoples of these former colonies and conquered lands allow our leaders to be compromised and corrupted by them and to work in cahoots with them against our best interests, when all of those things happen, and they do happen still, we continue to be captive and taken advantage of. They are still telling us to do as they say, and not as they do. And we can't go on blaming them forever. It is our fault. And Charles Mountbatten Windsor embodies that northern arrogance and wealth that has preyed on southern exploitation, blood, and enslavement for centuries. So Charles needs to go in a cool and thoughtful way, but he needs to go. So when the time comes, I urge you to vote yes. Now, I want to come to this proposal by our government to have 2,400 houses built over the next four years, 600 houses a year, under contract with some foreign business people. Don't get me wrong. I have nothing against foreign people. How could I? What I want to see done right is the processes being managed so that the principal purpose of government which is to protect and promote our citizens, is obeyed. So here are some questions and comments. One, given the scope of this project, intended to house about 20% of 
of the population should there not have been sharing of information and consultations with the public i think so two if houses are to be built on government lands the new citizenship by investment regulations say that the homes will belong to the government on completion so it would in effect be a government project private investors private developers public good that's fine has due diligence been done on east coast housing development out of trinidad on brico renewable energy group on brian singh of trinidad has due diligence been done on an irish man who lives in china who gives the name of jerry has due diligence been done on set a form out of guyana and set a form out of china and nanjing cement company out of china and amix company also out of china i'm not accusing anybody of anything i'm just putting to you what i humbly suggest are important questions to be asked and answered these are names we are seeing and hearing in relation to this project and are there any other businesses that are intended to be involved is anyone fronting for any other company or interest group the same man jerry is seen on a video interview in which he said that the houses will come with fridges tvs toasters dishwashers etc which he said will be part of the price and which will be more than likely manufactured in china so possibly whether you want these appliances or not you may still have to pay for them which would be another smart way of pushing chinese products into our economy small as our economy may be with local suppliers of these items and this is question 3 well the third set of questions will local suppliers of these items be able to compete with this the same interview with jerry was done in 2022 and in it he said that they had a contract with st kitts nevis and grenada was that comment made before the elections of august 2022 or after which administration signed it with him or with them next why are we allowing a company from china to come in here and put up what is claimed to be a 25 million us dollar concrete batching plant when we already have local businesses that do that and which should be encouraged and supported so they can build capacity to handle increased local demand not only from this project but from others isn't that how you protect and promote your own next question has anybody considered that if this thing happens these people could quickly i mean the concrete people become the dominant provider of concrete in our country and what would that do to our local concrete providers push them out of the game and onto the breadline and a number of local people losing their jobs are we thinking these things through i don't believe a chinese company is going to invest in a batching plant here just for one project next have environmental health energy water social logistical security and economic impact assessments been done on this project if so shouldn't they be discussed with the public and if not why not why were they not done next will the lands where these houses are to be built be some of our best food producing land or will there be marginal land which of course is the better option will infrastructure such as roads water electricity internet cable sewage systems etc be installed because we know that a lot of lots have been given out over the years in areas where there are no services will spaces in these developments be allocated for flower gardens or subsistence backyard farming for play and community areas for commercial areas that is how you develop settlements you make sure that the amenities are in not just a house for somebody to live in is there any debt exposure for the government if so how much and how could that affect the fiscal and financial operations of the government over the next 4 or more years what is this creative form 
technology that they're talking about. I heard Mr. Leon Natter Nelson say that it could withstand a Category 10 hurricane. Well, we know that he was joking because there's no such thing as a Category 10 hurricane. But seriously, what can these houses stand up to? And if it is different from what our people are accustomed to, and it is, whether our potential homeowners or our contractors, whoever it may be, is there not an information and education process that should be put on the way with regard to our people knowing about the technology? If I'm re repeating myself, forgive me, but I think it is important. Now, based on the numbers that I've seen, this is a project that is being touted as an EC $750 million project. The one-bedroom house will sell for $111,000 EC. The two-bedroom, $213,000. That's $102,000 more for the extra bedroom, I suppose, for some more space as well. And the three-bedroom, $297,000. Let us presume that they sell eight hundred dollars of each. That means that with all of the houses sold, they will collect just under $500 million. <clears throat> But if it is a $750 million project and they're collecting only $500 million from the sale of houses, that means there's a shortfall of $250 million and people don't go into business to lose. Another thing to do with the money raises a question. The same man Jerry said that the cost of building these houses is $54 US dollars a square foot, which is about $145 EC dollars. However, Minister Hanley says that the one bedroom will go at 111,000. The one bedroom is 324 square feet, we are told, which works out to be $345 a square foot, not the 145 that we are getting from Jerry. So there may be a discrepancy here. And if so, it would be good for that discrepancy to be explained. So if my calculations are correct, then my questions are these. How will this project really be financed? Is it a CBI project? If so, how many passports are to be allocated for the developers to offer to the global market? And who will be the service providers? Will they be handpicked or will applicants for citizenship have a free hand? And to whom will the applications be addressed? To the developer, as was the case with the Galaxy Jail, which incidentally is continuing and I'm told, being done with Chinese labor? Or will the applications be sent to the government? We have had bad experiences with CBI projects here on the island, and I don't need to point them out to you. So what assurances can we get that this won't be just another one of those? The same man Jerry said that these houses can be built in a month and that they are typically suited for people who want to build with the help of friends, self-help sort of stuff. Or alternatively, he said, his company can build the houses. So this leads me to ask the question, given that there'll be less labor intensive and construction proceeds so quickly, what real and lasting benefits will we see for our contractors, our construction workers, our truckers and so forth? How much local value added? How much money, capital, will there be injected into our economy? And do the prices published by the minister himself include the land? If they do not, then that means that the land price would have to be added. So the purchase price would be higher than the 111,000, the 213,000, and the 297,000. And if the prices do include the land, then the government share would have to come out of the prices, which means that these developers, unless it is a CBI project, and they're making good money from the CBI, would lose even more than the 250 million. Questions need to be asked and answered. So we are back to price. I imagine that this project would include duty and other concessions. The one bedroom house is priced at 111,000. And as I said, it's 324 square feet, based on our information, $345 per square foot. That sounds kind of high for affordable housing done with duty and other concessions granted. As I end, let me say this. I am not at all against private investments for public good. I am not against programs for housing. 
and for other developments that can benefit primarily the people of this country. But a project of this scope and consequentiality, if it is to proceed, needs to do so only after the public is fully informed and at this time understandably eager as the government is to stir up economic activity. It is always better to wait a bit, not forever but a bit, inform the public, get it right, before these holes that are intended to be dug into the ground with all the good intentions in the world. Better to take a little time and get it right than these holes end up becoming political burial sites for our decision makers. In short, the government needs to have a serious conversation with the people and sending who have been sent before and presenting the matters to us in the manner in which they have pre been presented. Those ways are not enough. We need a full picture. We wish the government and the people well. Thank you. Yes, that's the boy, G. A. Dwyer Astafan commentary for today. And um, pretty soon we're going to um, closing down. But before I do that, I want to say good evening to some folks there. My boy, brother Curtis Cook. How are you doing, my brother, the man E.K.? Brother Lincoln Hudson, A.K.A. DJ Rabuka, how are you doing? I want to also big up my boy Kibo, the man K.O., how are you doing? How about the brother there, Kent? Brother Kent and Debbie there in the Harlem area, my boy there, brother Elvis Williams, A.K.A. the King Freddie, the boy G. Um, Green. How are things going with you guys? I want to big up my um, engineer, brother Ike. I want to thank you, brother, for your continued support technical service to keep things going. I want to pick up the man Elvin Ellie. Thanks for all your assistance and contribution to getting my clips rolling. I want to pick up my boy Alvin Brown. How are you doing, brother Alvin? Brother Kenwick Williams there in the Virgin Islands. My nephew there, brother Glenville Lawrence. Thanks for all your assistance, my brother, keeping the thing rolling. You know, I want to pick up Uncle Joseph there at the Davis Estate. Remember, Uncle Joseph have the grounds there if you want to have a wedding, outdoor event, rooms for rent, apply within. Um, you can get your wedding, reception, parties, whatever session, check out Uncle Joseph there at Garby's Estate. Uh, you can go on uh, YouTube and just um, look for um, Garby's Estate. You will pick it up there and DJ Marisha. Um, DJ Marisha link on YouTube. I also want to beg up my cousin there, Gloria Hutchinson, over there in St. Kitts. She have her clothing store there, one and on Cairn Street, right across from the gas station, right off Fourth Street. Check it out. Also, the main store over there on Central Street in the old Simaco building, right next to Skellig. When you check out Gloria, just let her know DJ Marisha sent you. She will give you a discount. Don't forget to check my boy there over in the Frigate Bay area, the Jamwak restaurant and bar. Just ask for Michael Clark, let him know DJ Marisha sent you. He will definitely take care of you. And don't forget my boy Marshall's just up the hill um, from Jamwak um, after the second roundabout. Great food, great entertainment. And my boys there in um, Oud, the Spratnet fellow. Check them out. Definitely take care of you guys. And we got down to Parsons Ground, my boy there, the Ras Mason. He might cook some serious bull food and cook up and goat water and stuff like that. Check him out any Friday and Saturday, and you'll be all right. There's enough businesses around the Federation that um, I know Music Festival will be happy to get a taste. I look forward to folks sending me their information. I'll be happy to push that information here um, for them. Like I said before, next Wednesday, I'll be taking a break, have to take care of some business with the New York Cricket League. I'll be back on the 24th. I want to say good night to Sister Cora Bennett. How are you doing? Hope all is well. Sister Ann Farrell Smith, hope you guys are doing well. My girl, dear Sister Tracy Powell, hope you guys are all right. Tracy Jeffers, Yvonne there in the UK, Sister Sandra, Millie, and the crew. i big up my boy, the Jerry Hutchinson. Brother Clive, 
Hope all is well, Jermaine, uh, Jennifer, and um, Sylvia. Hope all is well with you guys. I want to big up my cousin there in St. Croix. Sister Shakima, how are you doing? How is my uncle there, Eustace Hendricks? Uh, Eustace Hendricks, sister. How are you doing? Hope all is well. The man, Mighty Pat. The man, Jerome Vanterpool, a.k.a. the King Wager in the UK. Brother Ruben Martin there in the UK. Bernard and Alice, I hope you guys are doing well there in the UK. Sister Charlene, Daniel, hope you guys are well. I want to also big up my brother, the Digger, in the Florida area, Sister Cheryl. I hope that you are recuperating well from your surgery, Sister Cheryl Bryan. Hope all is well with you. The man Sadler, hope all is well with you as well. Looking forward to seeing you. I'm going to drop a track here. And I'm going to drop this track for a particular reason. Because I keep saying, when people make their mistake and do wrong to you, feel sorry for them, they come back and they root down your gate. As I start this program, I'll finish it. And they dealt with Cleone the way they should have. When they saw um, what was happening, we would not be in the situation we is right now with the NRP. So this one is Justice and the Old Hand. I want to drop that for all of them dirty boys there. People like the baby Brantley and the farmer hug. This is. situation of justice in our lands well just conviction should be awarded to every man can't we understand mm -hmm. that punishment or death to a criminal can't be in vain for if he's jailed for life or they hang him i he would never disturb next man again listen to my song the punishment why should you do wrong mm -hmm. There's no man who could ever be wrong and strong. So if a man commits murder, don't sit there and cry. You just hang him high and let my words condense. True sense and go and tell my people that if they create more trouble, they would meet their fate. For old people say that when you're sorry for old hog, what would it do but turn around and go down your head? This advice I took from a story which I heard about a man named Bruno. In the whole of his life, he wounded and murdered more than 300 people. Mm -hmm. But the judge was so biased because it was his best friend that he sent him to jail to penalty of the island so that he could not be condemned. What a big mistake! But Bruno escaped and swam back to shore. Mm -hmm. His main intention was to kill one more So he called the judge that sent him to jail And kill his tail But why should I hang Bruno high Real high in order to protect other people And prevent further trouble But judge found out late, real late That he was sorry for that old hog So what he do, he turn around And root down his head Exploiting the revenue of any island No police should just want him and set him free Because of a high position No, he should be treated the way they would treat any other man For the law of constitution was made to govern Each and every man that lives on this land Even policemen The police are here to see if we do right Let him remain in the lion's den, let him meet the faith, don't wait. But when they're sorry for that old hog, what would he do? He'll turn around and go down the gate. Well, the hearts so 
love man is so desperately wicked And you know it's true So you can't afford to let sheer sympathy And good will just overcome you No, if a man violates the law No matter who he may be He could be pastor turner, labor or commissioner Sound of the King Star Shield there. Justice and the old hug. Cannot let those politicians get away the whipping of the country and whipping the country and think because they're in a high position, they're not supposed to face the music. That is the idea. I want to say good night to my cousin there, my boy Twinkie. How are you doing? How is Sister Catherine Morris? Wheezy. Brother Mull, how about the man there? Craig Challenger, the sugars. How are you doing? Hope all is well with you on your end. Sister there, Lynette. Hutchinson, how are you doing? Hope all is well. My brother Jean Paris is there. How are you doing? Sister um, Rochelle, my daughter there in um, Ohio. How are you and the grandkids doing? My son there, Jeff Roy Jr. in the LA area. How are you and Sister Jazz doing? Um, good evening, my sister in Tortola. Esther, husband Makish and the kids. Hope all is well. Brother Joseph, Jeremy, hope all is well with you guys. You know, I want to big up my cousin there, brother Kent uh, Bernier and sister Pamela Bernier there in St. Thomas. My favorite cousin there, sister Natalie Francis. How are you doing? How is Caroline and the crew? Sister Emma, hope all is well. But I'm going to drop the unofficial national anthem in a bit, you know. You guys don't want to hear that track. I'm asking you to please listen to the lyrics. I know the music is very punchy and you're going to want to bounce in your chair and things like that. Folks like Jelly Bud. Ingrid Daniel, Delicious Nicholas, Hazel Claxton, Annette Morton. I know you guys are Dell, the Mac Magdalene, um, my boy there, but a Thaddeus Depper I know you guys are gonna want to bounce to this one, but please just listen to the lyrics. Lyrics is sweet. My cousin there, brother F um Everson Harris there in Toronto, sister Katie DeGuire in Toronto. Hope all is well with you all. This one is coming from the late great the King Arrow. This one is called Arise. Big up, Sister Naomi Ward, Naomi Bracho, how are you doing? Sister Joseph McKinnon Glassford, how are you doing? Hope all is well with you. Sister Ivy Carty, the man there. Well, <laughs> Thank you. 
Good night to my girl, dear sister Lioness Charles. How are you doing? Everything good with you? Sister Gwyneth Marisha, I hope all is well on your end. Sister Beverly Marisha, I also want to big up my folks there in the Tobago area. Sister um, Gloria Beard, Brother Victor Beard, my missionary there. Sister Deborah Wallace, the man Roger Wallace, hope all is well. Melissa Beard, how are you doing? The man Donnell and General there in the in that area, I want to pick up my friend there, the man Brown, the mechanic, the man Dynamic Oven. I got some news today that one of 
my colleague there in St. Kitts, a uh, cousin of ours, the man Jakey, Jacob, former driver for the van there of the JNF hospital. I understand he passed away recently. I don't know if it's today or last night, but I want to say condolences to um, Catherine and Gloria and the crew there in St. Paul's. You know, once, once somebody die in St. Paul's, the entire community grieve. So I want to say condolences to the entire community of St. Paul's there and the passing of my boy, Jacob. There has been so many people that passed away in the last couple of months. It's amazing that when I get back there, I won't be able to see them again, but it's something that we all have to deal with. So again, I want to take the opportunity to thank my brother there, brother, the Honorable Joseph Parry for joining me this evening. Very healthy conversation. Look forward to having him back. I also want to say good night to my boy, brother C.G. Walwin, former commissioner of um, St. Kitts Nevis. We also had a very good conversation not too long ago. Don't forget, folks, the answer reunion is coming up July 14th to the 16th in Anguilla. And um, brother Connor, Carson Connor, was here last week with some colleagues discussing the matter. So we will have them back on the 24th to give some more updates on that trip. So um, just keep it on your calendar the answer reunion there in Anguilla, July 14th to the 16th. Brother Ike, look forward to seeing you, my brother. It's summer. You, you need to come out and hang with DJ Marish. I want to big up my baby girl one more time for hanging out with me this evening. So folks, until such time, blessings on everyone. Stay